Hey folks, welcome of course to Custom Signs Beachland Speedway for night number two of the Gillies Contracting Battle of the Street Stocks and of course there's a whole bunch of things happening tonight. Right beside me is the, uh, uh, I suppose, commentator extraordinaire. His name's Daryl Shutterworth and Daryl, uh, we were witness to probably a little bit of sedate. There's a little few moments of action but generally I think it was just your normal typical Friday night for a street stock deal, wasn't it? Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, the first couple of heats, yeah, the guys were sort of testing each other out, and there was a few DNFs, which, um, you know, the old flat tyre thing having to pull in, that certainly hurt some of the combinations, but then race three, things started to heat up a wee bit there, and it's just a taste, I think, of what we're going to see here tonight. I actually just uh, was uh, went into the driver's brief, and I caught up for AJ Laps, and I said, uh, when, when do you want us to schedule your rollover uh, for, for tonight? Of course, he's well known for doing that type of thing at this particular event. But, of course, there's a little bit more happening behind the scenes as well. We probably didn't discuss last night. Uh, there is the Young and the Restless. There is obviously a stock car. There's a, a deal going on. Um, there's all sorts of different uh, events. But tonight, we also add the Otago Super Saloon Champs to the deal as well. Yeah, well, um, I noticed a few super saloons here when I was wandering around. I think originally they had seven cars here and uh, now 11, so a really good field of super saloons. I'm really looking forward to those guys, um, especially if the track's like it was last night. The track was absolutely fantastic. Massive credit to the, uh, the track crew. Uh, that 40 lapper last night, the track was as good at the end of it as what it was when they rolled out at the start of the night, so uh, a massive pat on the back to the track crew here. And the other thing too, just on that note, uh, Ashton Osborne did his fastest lap on his last lap so that just goes testament to how good that track actually was and I think as the, as the race sort of carried on a bit of moisture come up through and he found a bit more uh, speed out of that car. Yeah, well, that's what amazed me last night when you interviewed him. The, the kid wasn't even sweating. He gets out of the car and he goes, I could do another 40 laps. That was once he swore a couple of times. But, um, yeah, in fact, Mark's getting behind the wheel of a car here tonight as well. So that's going to be cool to see uh, him out on track. So, yeah, it, it was. The track was good. Ashton actually took me through his my laps on his phone. And as you say, he was cracking out lap times at the end as good as what he was at the start. So it was cool. Absolutely. Of course, they're racing for the Don McLean Memorial thing tonight, is it? I'm pretty sure it is. I haven't actually got a list of what's actually running tonight, um, but I'm pretty sure that is what it is. Um, also, classic street stocks here tonight as well. Um, yeah, like, as I say, like, it, it's a really cool vibe in the pits here tonight. It's probably about uh, eight degrees warmer than it was last night, and it's just a really good vibe, and everyone's happy and, uh, and doing their thing, and we should be in for a really cool night's entertainment. I'm going to give you the microphone. How about you talk to AJ Lapsley and ask him all his questions about how he enjoyed his rollover? Come on over, AJ. So of course last night, ripping down there to turn number two, you're looking for a big move around the outside and lo and behold you go to make a move and all of a sudden you're on your lid. Seems to be a common occurrence here at Dunedin, uh, just how I roll. I mean I've done it uh, I think two years ago, I rolled in the first and the third race, so hopefully I can keep it on all four tonight. So of course you would have a bit of work on it overnight, the car didn't look too bad, you fired it into life and drove down to the infield which was cool to see, so was there much damage? No, it's just really cosmetics. Um, Bit of a crack in the uh, roll cage we chucked a weld and a gusset on it, but no, nah, apart from that, it's just a bit of tinfoil. So, of course, you wouldn't have even seen Adam Stewart when you were going around there. He was right down on the pole line, got spat out over there, and uh, all of a sudden you're upside down. No, I didn't actually know what happened. I was, yeah, like you said, trying to make a move, and someone tapped me, and yeah, she was all, all over from there. I think it might have gone over two or three times almost, I don't know. It's pretty good, though. So what can we expect tonight? We're going to see any more acrobatics or uh, you're going to go and keep it? Uh, what's the plan? Have you put something in place with your partner as to what you're going to do going forward? Yeah, well, he seems to be fast and I'll just, uh, I'll just hitch it. Excellent. Hey, mate, you can't do it without your sponsors. Uh, who looks after you? Uh, McLean Contracting and Garantown and Fabrication. Excellent. Good on you, AJ. Good luck tonight, mate. Yeah, mate. So there we go. AJ Lapsley, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on AJ tonight. Of course, he'll be uh, in amongst things and I'll give you this thing back. Absolutely, Darren. Of course, so good luck with your commentary tonight. Fantastic job last night. We always appreciate having Darren on board with us. And uh, there's a few inappropriate comments come through too, mate. I'm not sure what you're going to do about that tonight. Yeah, really hard when you're trying to do a professional job through the microphone. You've got these little ear pieces on and all you hear is this clown here whispering in your ear all sorts of things that I won't repeat on camera. He would. I won't. I would definitely repeat them. But anyway, best of luck, Daryl, and we look forward to catching up with Daryl, and perhaps he might jump on board and help us out a little bit later on in the night with some of the uh, some of the uh, um, interviews and stuff that are going to be uh, happening after these events. So let's take a wee bit of a pit walk here. 57D, Aaron Andrews, fantastic job last night. Just didn't quite have the speed of the two stealth machines. Phil Burgess has come to join us. Phil, mate, you come to join us. 
It's it's good to see you here. You didn't uh, come last night. What's what's the special occasion tonight? Oh, Jace, we were just had to work yesterday, so unfortunately we couldn't make it through. Like last time we run the 40 lap, we finished second, close with Aaron, but but gutted we missed that one. But we'll give it a nudge tonight and see if we can get a couple of stouts on the podium tonight. Absolutely, it was two last night, so the, you know, you've got a wee bit of work to do there, but you've just obviously had a bit of a rebuild in your car. Uh, I noticed, I went to, actually went to Cromwell on Sunday last week and um, all sorts of water and bits and pieces happened. Did the uh, hose come off or what happened there? Yeah, we biffed the drive outs in one of the races and, and it got a little bit warm and, and uh, biffed, the, biffed the hose, so we have um, sorted all that out for the last heat and we went all night right, so it was pretty good. Good stuff, and uh, tonight, I suppose, when was the last time you raced it? Have you raced at Beechlands with this car before? Yeah, we run the, um, the the saloon series here back in November last year, and, and I think that was probably the last time we were here. I've sort of had the last three months off racing, crewing for Craig Cardwell, so that's been pretty awesome. Oh, I suppose you would have learned a lot through Craig as well. He's a, a pretty talented driver. Did you pick up a few of his habits? Yeah, I got plenty of his rubber off him too, because now he's running a decent car that he's got four bar, and, and he's running the same size tyres as what we are, so it's really good, and we learned a lot of stuff and tried a lot of different things with his car, so it was quite cool. Who's uh, sponsoring you this year, mate? Uh, we've got Toyo Tyres, Campbell and Gaston Motors, AWS, Custom Signs and Winmax Brake Pads thanks to Hayden Padden. Well, I tell you, if we come back and see you, you've done pretty good things, so hopefully we come back and see you throughout the night, Phil. Thanks, Jase. Righto, let's keep walking down the, the line here. Obviously the man of the moment, the uh, 16C, the Stealth Engineering Osborne Machine, SADT, looking after him as well. 34, Ray Stewart joins us. Ray's uh, obviously had some issues with some... Um, with some uh, bits and pieces. Uh, I think the, somebody was telling me that his head gasket blew on his car uh, in Cromwell and he had to put it on the trailer. We'll just get some confirmation of that. Ray, was that true? At Cromwell you blew a head gasket or something or other and you couldn't actually race the second night? Yeah, that's right. The first night we were coming from the second race and it overheated and what had happened, the, it's got an electric water pump in it and the wire had arced out on something, um, stopped the water pump going, so the thing overheated, the motor overheated. Um, we tried to repair the um, wiring, didn't get out for the second race and for the second night we got to um, the racetrack and we started up and it was blowing water out the overflow from the radiator, um, took the radiator cap off and it was blowing wee bubbles out there so okay we've got a blown head gasket. So that was a bit of a rush to get that back home again, pull the motor apart, get the heads off, get the head skim, put it back together, check it, pull it back apart again because something wasn't quite right. I also heard that the the home the trip home wasn't that fantastic either. I think the tow vehicles uh, played up as well. Jesus Christ, the news tra travels quick, doesn't it, you bugger? Um, yeah, we we got a Chevy um, 2500 there that something let down the motor, so we had to park up pretty much at Clyde there and get a tow truck in. We got the truck back home there yesterday. It doesn't go anymore, so. Uh, it is what it is, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, just as well you own a heavy tracks company, you can be able to just haul it back, no problem at all. I don't know now because it's starting to get bloody expensive, all this stuff. Yeah. You, you're supposed to have issues with the race car, not the tow vehicle, Ray. Well, we had that too the other night, so uh, we'll see how it goes tonight. Looks like a good track out there. It's, um, there's 11 supers here tonight, some good guys there too. Um, it won't be easy amongst them. There's some good quality cars here. How do you rate your season? Has it been a good one? I mean, you're sort of there or thereabouts, but not quite getting those little finishing spots. Um, we've, we've had some good nights and we've come away like we went to the Extreme Dirt Series. We're doing quite good up there. Um, there was some fairly slick tracks and we managed to get a car to hook up quite a few times. Um, but the, that ended up in a, in a rollover at Nelson and that sort of cleaned us out for quite a bit. But we've had some good meetings um, here at New Zealand Champs. First night we, we quite enjoyed that. The second night was a, a nobody's track except for maybe two cars. Um, that upset quite a few guys I guess but that's what it is and um, didn't really come away overly happy with that particular meeting in New Zealand Champs. We've had some good nights but we've had some average nights. So are you staying with this car moving forward or is there a, you know you seem to change your cars like you change your underwear, probably change your car more often actually. Don't be stupid. <laughs> um, no, no we're stuck with this car. We've got the Champs next year in uh, Cromwell, New Zealand Champs. Um, the car goes quite good up there, but some of these new four-bar cars, they're faster than what we are, so we have to come up with something new in the car. We're not going to buy a new car. If you buy a new car, it usually takes a season to get the handling sorted. Um, so we're only going to have two or three months to get the car to handle and do what it needs to do, and it won't happen. 
The, are you still running torsions on this? Yeah. Right. Wouldn't be too many cars out there now that do that, is it? Yeah, if you look along, along here, probably just about everyone is a torsion bar car. Um, the newer four bar cars are all gone to coil over shocks in the rear. Um, a spring is a spring, so a torsion is a spring, a coil over a spring. The car doesn't know what spring it's got, and you can make them both work. Well, the thing is that um, a torsion can be a little bit more forgiving too, isn't it? Like you can you get away with making a mistake in the setup, whereas the four bar it has to be pretty accurate with the setup that you put into it. I don't really know because we run a torsion now for pretty much say, 10, 12 years, and I don't really know what the uh, the coilovers are doing these days. But the the top cars are on coilovers, so we'll go to that too. We ha we have to follow suit to keep up those front guys. Absolutely. Good sponsors on the car too, Ray, who looks after you? Yep. Um, heavy Tracks Eye these days, that's a big sponsor. Uh, Vertex uh, Lubricants from up north, um, Andrew Stewart, he's been a uh, good person for our you know, early funding of the Super Cup and we try to look after him as well. Absolutely. Well, best of luck tonight and hopefully you might add the Otago Champs to your list of trophies at home. That's probably quite large, is it? Yeah, like I said, there's some good cars here and um, we'll do what we can do. Good luck, Ray. Thanks very much for having a chat, mate. Best of luck. So we'll just go through the list here. 64, Ray, uh, Barry Redpath joins us tonight. Seemingly this is his last run in his Super Saloon uh, before it gets put away. And uh, Barry's going to be focusing on saloon cars uh, for next season uh, with a Stealth, a brand new Stealth. So then we've got the, the Corvette there, the young fella that's sitting up there. We'll bring him out and uh, have a quick chat to him because uh, we skipped him last night. We don't want to be skipping him. What's your name, young man? Travis Smith. Right, uh, Travis. So, uh, obviously, um, you impressed a lot of people last night. You don't have the top-line horsepower. You don't have, you know, the big budgets and all that sort of stuff. But you're certainly uh, a person that is just doing the job out there and seem to be enjoying yourself. Yeah, uh, first season this season, only our seventh meeting last night. Um, we run a pretty budget race car. Came out of karting last year, so we're just enjoying having fun. It's um, amazing, to, of course, it's, like you said, you've come out of karting and that's where you've done most of your racing for a lot of years. Uh, have you been able to take some of the stuff you learnt out of karting and bring it into the into the saloon class? Uh, yeah, just basic brake and throttle control has been a big thing. Um, it's still completely different. Learning how to drive it and get it to work is a big deal. Now, you've only got, Travis, you've only got a 355 Chevy in that. Nothing fantastic in it. There is a plan to take that motor out and give it a bit of a tweak in the off-season. You'll be looking forward to a little bit of extra horsepower, maybe to get a bit closer to these guys. Oh, yeah, more horsepower is always better. We want to be up the front next season and contesting for some wins. What's the chassis in this machine? Uh, it's a tiny rod. So. Oh, yeah, so it's a proven car then. Uh, yeah. you got some good sponsors to look after you, bud? Uh, yeah, ARB Dunedin's our biggest one. Auto Super Shops Dunedin and Auto Mech here. Uh, it's all the old man's business, but looks after us, so can't complain. Your old man's always looked after you. You should be very grateful to have that man on your side. Yeah, got to keep him happy. Absolutely. Well, best of luck, buddy. And uh, that's, of course, Travis Smith. Uh, then we've got the 59 there. He's busy making noisy noises. Uh, Ricardo Balkan has come to join us as well. I'd imagine that you'll probably find, by the looks of things, that uh, 891 will possibly be driven by um, well, uh, Mark Osborne tonight, I believe so, because I can see that Josh is still wearing all his clothes as a bit of a... You know, uh, a bit of a scheming going on over here with these guys. Look at it. Three wise men. There's Angelie over there. Wave. Hey, Angelie, here you go. <laughs> She's ever given us a good wave over there, Stubby. So, uh, so yeah, I expect that. Well, it's going to be nosy, eh? Come on, let's just interrupt them. Josh, 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 tell us stories, mate. Why, well, you're not, you're not in your car. So does that mean that Mark Osborne's in your car? Yeah, yeah he is, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you said you were coming down to me last week and you're coming down to have a race. And now we find out that you're not racing. So what? What's the? Is it trying to get the car set up or get it going good? Or what's the? What's the? Why is he in your car? Um, well, I found out I got old man disease, and I was leaning in the car, and uh, busted a rib. Did you really? I did. Yeah. Well, that's not ideal. So that's why he's probably racing your car then, isn't it? Yeah. So don't make me laugh. Uh, well, here we go. That sounds like a challenge to me. Um, so tell me, um, if he wins in this car tonight. Does that not put more pressure on you to be able to sort of step up and perform a bit better? Absolutely. It's a high risk, eh? I'm a pussy anyway, so here we easy. 
I'm pretty sure he can get in the car without breaking a rib. All right, mate. Well, hey, we'll be interested to see how he goes, but you need to look after yourself, obviously. Uh, yeah, I'll go and um, sit in some cotton wool. fans to Custom Signs Beachland Speedway, the Gillies Contracting Battle of the Street Stocks, night number two. Beautiful night, beautiful day here in uh, Dunedin. Of course, a little bit breezy, but uh, beautiful blue skies, and we are in for a fantastic night of entertainment here at the uh, Gillies Contracting Battle of the Street Stocks. About 15 degrees, just shy of 15 degrees at the moment. Uh, we were breezy, 22.5 k's an hour. It is a northerly out there, but uh, as I say, folks, no chance of rain whatsoever. Going to be an absolutely fantastic night. So rolling out on track at the moment, the top 10 cars. This here is the uh, the shootout. The winner of this here gets the chance to start at the back of the grid and score themselves $500. They don't have to do it, but they can. So Garthley, he will start from the front row of the grid. This is basically the points wash up at the moment. So uh, John O'Garthley from Christchurch, car number 35, lines up alongside uh, Sean Ashton, car number 61 out of the Needham. Corey Schumacher, car number 77, lines up beside Mitch Lavender on the second row in car triple five. Ben Jenkins, 345, he starts from fifth alongside Sean Andrew in car number 46 from Christchurch. Matt Stewart starts car number 828 from seventh. Chris Kirgazoo on his outside, car number 86 from Riverside. Next up, we have O'Connellins from Blenheim, car number 94 starting from ninth. And the New Zealand street stock champion, Paul Leslie, starting from 10th place on the grid. So he's chosen to run for the money, we have been told. So Leslie needs to come through this field, win this race. He picks himself up 500 bucks. You can see a vacant spot on the front there. That's where Paul Leslie would have been. He's a top point scorer. He's right at the back of the field, of course. Uh, this one here too, folks. You won't want too much damage heading in to uh, the fourth heat of the Battle of the Street Stocks a little bit later on. But it's Garthley and Ashton, those uh, teammates that lead at the moment. They're out in front. You can just see at the moment. It's still very, very greasy around a 1 and 2 in that 1 NZ of Leslie. Really struggling to get anything to the ground in that car. He's actually fallen back from the pack. Matt Stewart fallen back also. So it's Ashton that leads. He goes around the uh, Lammermoor Station corner onto the main straight. Garthley tucks in behind him. Contact on the wall down there. That's between Jenkins and Lavender. The triple five and the three four five. So the 77 of Schumacher in third place. Garthley with a nice move down the inside of his teammate. Scott Ashton, Lavender up to fourth place. Then we go back to car 46. Sean Andrew next in the queue. Andrew coming past the control tower now. Then ins Kurgazoo. Jenkins, Leslie, and Matt Stewart. So Leslie's picked himself up one spot. Bit of a pile up down there in turn number two. All started by uh, the triple five of Lavender. Of course, he won the shootout here last night. He was the fastest man on track prior to racing starting. Leslie now starting to eye up both uh, O'Connell wins and Kurgazoo. Comes down the main straight. 500 bucks on the line. He's actually up to fourth place. So uh, while I said before he's off to a slow start, he's certainly making his way through traffic. He's backing himself. He's heading down the back straight, down into three and four. Four laps to run as the race leader comes through. That's John O'Garthley, then Schumacher. Aston, 
and the man we need to keep an eye on, car number one, your New Zealand champion currently up in fourth place. But he's pretty much the whole straight length away from the leader. He needs to win this race to pick up 500 bucks. At the moment, a lot of work to do. There'll be three laps to run as the race leader comes through once more. Just sits down low between one and two, the Paul McDonald Earth moving corner. Schumacher giving chase, car number 77. He's got the big tank slapper going on down in there to three and four. Thought he was going to lose it down there on the entry to three, but he held on to it well. He's still holding second place. Then we go back to Ashton. Leslie chasing hard. Ben Jenkins with a big move down the inside of Kyrgyzou and O'Connell wins. Picks up two spots there, so uh, Jenkins fell down the order. He's certainly backing himself now. So Ashton, half a car length ahead of Paul Leslie. That's the third spot. Race leader onto the main straight once more. Couple of laps to run in this one. Schumacher still giving chase. Leslie trying to find a way down the inside of Ashton. That's your battle for third and fourth place. So Leslie slips up the inside there, still very greasy, nothing on offer whatsoever around one and two. See Jenkins here just a, a moment ago past Kyrgyzou, and of course Kyrgyzou closed up on him again briefly. Jenkins comes through once more. Lavender and Kyrgyzou in hot pursuit behind him. Then Andrew, car number 46. White flag comes out this time around. Garthley comes through. Car 35 out of Christchurch. Then Schumacher, car 77. He's currently holding second place. Leslie in third, the 1NZ. You can see them down the straights, pretty much uh, flicking the car to the inside, throwing it to the outside just to set it up for those corners. 25 second lap time, so uh, last night they were running around in the 20s. But it's going to be Garthley who'll take this one here out. Home in second place, the 77 of Corey Schumacher. And the 1NZ of Paul Leslie will come home in a third place. So he couldn't quite get it done, but he did a good job coming from the back of the field to get himself up to third place in the street stop shootout. So Johnny Garthley takes it out, Schumacher almost start five and a half seconds behind. Car number 77, then Paul Leslie, the one NZ in third, Scott Ashton, car number 61 in fourth place, Mitch Lavender in fifth, Ben Jenkins got himself home in sixth, Chris Kyrgyzou up to seventh, Sean Andrew in eighth, Jordan O'Connell in ninth place, and Matt Stewart, the 808, rounding up your top ten. So folks, there we go, that is race number one done and dusted here tonight at Custom Signs Beachlands Speedway. Just taking a wee look outside of the uh, com box window at the moment. Of course, there will be a, a little bit of a change in race order due to uh, those cars out there rolling the track before. So uh, just looking out there at the moment, and it looks like classic street stops will be out on track in just a moment. But uh, there he is, car number 35, John O'Garthley. He takes out the shootout here at the uh, Gillies Contracting Custom Signs Beachland Speedway Battle of the Street Stop. Anderton Decorators are a long established Canterbury company covering the whole of the South Island who love to support their local community. If you require expert advice from design to application, then Shane has the expert team to ensure your next project is hassle free with a professional finish. Floor to ceilings, walls to roof, inside outside, commercial or residential. Let our team take the hassle out of your decorating. Give us a call now on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. What you think you do with your four-wheel drive. What you actually do with your four-wheel drive. No matter what you do with your four-wheel drive, we've got the right tyre for you. So come on down to Mag and Turbo.
back to uh, Customer Signs Beachland Speedway Classic Street Stocks out on track of course uh, these are the cars that uh, did us so well for a number of years right across tracks throughout New Zealand the Classic Street Stocks the Falcons the Valiants the old Holdens really really cool to see them making a, uh, a comeback around tracks as well car number 19 of course that is uh, is Gary Cuff Russell Stewart not uh, in it today. He was entered, but he's got an issue with his hand, so he's not out on track. Uh, Arnie Tahuta, car number 37, that V8-powered Holden. Very, very cool sounding car. And uh, he's on the main straight now. He'll come past the commentary box. Of course, father of the uh, Tahuta kids that you see racing in stock cars. Car number 83. Shane uh, Anderton, I think that is behind the wheel of that machine. Car number 75. Of course, uh, Daryl Hoon Richards, great looking car. He's giving chase down the back straight. And Bailey Gillum out there as well in car number 39. Just seeing Lucky McLean there, the 187 Valiant Charger. He had a bit of a, uh, a visit to the wall down there, turn number three. Track's still very greasy at the moment, but Cuff. Of course, he was a uh, production saloon driver here for a, a number of years out here with the Classic street stocks. He's giving chase at the moment to Ani Tahura. I think this exact event last year, Tahura picked up all three races for the classic street stocks. A lot of these guys have done an amazing job of restoring these cars. See the odd didn't a bit of uh, damage to. The odd car out there, so I'd imagine if you get close to your mate, you might get a little bit of a, uh, a clobbering, a bit of a tap and spin. Gentleman's great, of course. Arnie Tahuta still managing to hold off Cuff. Cuff having a bit of a look on the inside, coming out of two, but there's nothing on offer there uh, in two as far as grip goes at the moment. It is drying. Tahuta on the outside, get him up in front of those two lead cars. East car 39 on the main straight now. Cuff sets himself up down there in turn number one. Still can't quite get the nose up the inside of Arnie Tahura. Lockie McLean comes through. Daryl Richards, the Hoon. Shane Anderton there, car number 83. Of course, this race brought to you by R.W. Richards Contracting. Still Tahura, just steps out slightly wide. He's just given Cuff a bit of a sniff down the back straight. and sniff in the XC Falcon get a move up the inside of Ani Tahura. Side by side, they go onto the main straight. It's a good battle up front with one lap to run. So Cuff now leads this one here. Sits about mid-track between one and two. Powers off down the back straight. He's, uh, Managed to break away now from Ani Tahura. One more corner to go. Around the Lammermoor Station, turn three and four. And it's going to be Cuff who will take this one here out. Car number 19. The 37 of Ani Tahura in second place. And we should see car number 75. Hoon Richards home in third place. Classic Street Stocks there for his race. Of the evening here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway brought to you by RW Richards Contracting. Coming up next, folks, just having a wee uh, bit of a look out the commentary box window saloons. Hello, I've had a uh, pretty good feel for the track with all those hey, laps they rolled out before, but I'll be next in action here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Stouts off the front row of the grid. Ashton Osborne on the inside. Phil Burgess on the outside. Of course, uh, the car Phil's driving was Ashton's car from last year. Had that trial motor in it. That uh, never went ahead, but Phil's behind the wheel of that car in car 15. Wishing that team a, a better run tonight. But Osborne gets on the loud pedal. 
leads him down to turns number Yellow. one and two here. Yellow. So gone yellow in this one here. So uh, that there may well be. Osborne uh, did get on the gas here pretty smartly, so it could be deemed maybe a, uh, a jump start. Not sure. We'll wait and see what they call. So pretty much uh, telling the grid that... Uh, so yeah, Ashton Osborne did get away there a little bit early. Phil Bird just came number 15, even though he's starting from P2, he is the pace setter. So uh, just watch the replay there, courtesy of uh, Pitts Media. And yeah, young Ashton just a little bit eager by himself. We'll watch for Bird just setting the pace. Better start. Burgess and Osborne side by side. Osborne gets the overlap there. Bennett with a look on the inside. Mark Dobson off to a nice start in car number 51, but he's gone a little bit wide. He uh, almost give that ball a bit of a kiss coming out of turn number two. Aaron Andrews tucks in behind him. Then we go back to Travis Smith, Jason Gold, Wayne Bennett in car number 67, and Calvin Todd in car six. Osborne absolutely clearing off at the moment down to Lemmermore Station corner. Onto the main straight, of course, this will be Ashton's last meeting in this car this season. Talking to Mark, his father, prior to racing, he wants to concentrate getting his own car built up. Ashton's done all the, the race action this season. Oh, trouble there for Phil Burgess down the back straight. That car there uh, in all sorts. Car 15. Struggling to steer the thing, so uh, he's dropped well down the order. He'll probably be looking for a... Uh, a road to the infield, I would imagine. So that brings Bennett up into second spot. Burgess in all sorts of trouble. You can see that right front just not wanting to go anywhere at all. So through comes Bennett. He's being chased by Dobson, who's in third place. Then we go back to Andrews, Jason Gold, Travis Smith, Wayne Bennett, and Calvin Todd. So almost it's over the length of a straight at the moment. Ashton Osborne a 16.625, so the lap time's really starting to uh, come down here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Of course, this race here brought to you by the McLean family. Ashton Osborne last time around a 16.9 versus Mark Dobson's 17.7. So uh, Osborne, pretty race here. Of course, he's got that clear ear. He goes to the outside of Calvin Todd. They had a wee bit of a coming together last night in the 40 lapper. Both cars managed to keep going though. So Bennett in second place at the moment. 17 flat last time around versus a 17-4 for Mark Dobson. Aaron Andrews, he's starting to look a wee bit racy in the late stages of this one here. Couple of laps to go as uh, Ashton Osborne comes through. So Mark Dobson's gonna have company there very, very shortly. He'll be fighting with Aaron Andrews. They head down to turns number one and two. Aaron Andrews tucks in behind Dobson. Dobson just giving him a wee bit of a sniff. Needs to uh, jump into that defensive mode, which none of them ever like to do. They all like to attack. Bennett comes through. White flag is out. One more corner to go for Ashton Osborne. Car number 16. He's going to take out heat number one. Four saloons here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Bennett still holding that second spot. A nice drive for the 66 to get home in second place. And Mark Dobson, you'll be happy to get that last step on the podium in heat number one for car 51. But Ashton Osborne made it look easy. That'll be the easiest grid draw he gets tonight as well. He finishes this one here in first ahead of Ryan Bennett in car 66. Mark Dobson home in third in car 51. Then Aaron Andrews in fourth. Jason Gold in fifth. Travis Smith in sixth place. Wayne Bennett in seventh. And Calvin Todd in eighth place. Of course, the DNF for both Shane Greer and Phil Burgess. So uh, the run of luck for Phil Burgess continues in car 15. Hopefully they get that car sorted. But Ashton Osborne, a top time of 16 4 Seven one.
season of Youth Saloon Racing. The final night of her Youth Saloon's career. All comes to an end tonight as we go racing. She gets off to a good start. Josh Richardson, he manages to get past Caden Race this time around. Bennett on the outside, car number 73. Then we go back to Fleet. Kate Howard just falling back down the order. Brooks Hoper trying to find a way through. She's on the outside of Maya Johnson and uh, Max Kemp and car number 36 tucked in just behind them. Then we go back to Cron. Car number 21, that's Jasmine Todd. She's right there as well. So through they come. Out in front still, Maddie Stewart, car number 828. She would dearly love to bag herself a race win on her final night of racing in this grade. Going on to bigger and better things next season. But at the moment, she is being chased hard by the Wallace Town Motors sponsored car of Josh Richardson. Only a car length between first and second at the moment. Caden Race, he was pretty handy here last night as well. He got a bit of a tidy up in the last race while he was leading. Fell down the order. He's in third place at the moment. Car number 73, Ashley Bennett, currently in, uh, in third. Then we go back to Max Fleet. Max Kemp. Brooks Soper. And Cron still side by side. They've got Maya Johnson just up ahead of them. Cruz Soper doing a good job. He's uh, picked up a little bit more confidence since last night. Of course, very, very new to the grade. Looking a wee bit racy around there tonight, car number 88. He's just up ahead of car number 21, Jasmine Todd. And then dressed in constable, the, uh, the lad they call Lippy. Car number 24, currently about to uh, be pulled in by the leaders. This is where things can change. Unless the leaders can make a clean pass on lap traffic. They can all get a little bit untidy, so both Richardson and Maddie Stewart managed to get past Constable. Bennett's putting a ton of pressure on Caden Race. Race goes to the outside of Constable, makes a nice move. Max Kemp, he's right in that battle as well. He's down in fifth place at the moment, but still nothing between Maddie Stewart and Josh Richardson. Lap starting to count down here, folks. This race brought to you by Mulford Holdings. Oh, Brooke Soper, she may have made contact with the wall, felt the uh, control tower and give it a little bit of a shake. It's the old dead giveaway here at Beachlands. You feel it when something hits that wall and something certainly hit it. Brooke Soper was uh, looking a bit sheepish down the main straight. Like in Willem, car number 38, just up ahead of car 65, Caitlin Bennett. Race leaders come through again. Maddie Stewart has a handy lead at the moment over car 53, Joshua Richardson from Riverside Speedway. Bennett comes through, Caden Race, Max Kemp, Cron's right there as well, so a uh, bit of congestion down there. For fourth, fifth and sixth at the moment, Caden Race pushed wide, he's right out on the wall. Here comes the leader of this race, so the 8-8. Eight eight. From Stewart Motorsport, the white flag is out. One more lap to go. This would be an absolutely fitting result for that team. I know there's still a couple of races to go in the youth saloons here tonight, but it'd be great to see young Maddie pick up a race win on her final race meeting in the youth saloon. She's gone high and wide. Here comes Richardson. Can he challenge on the last straight? He's not going to. And Maddie Stewart, well done, young lady. She takes out race number one ahead of Richardson. Then we go back to car number 73, Ashley Bennett in third place. So uh, put on an absolutely fantastic performance here. So uh, well done, Matty Stewart takes out hey guys, race right number right one. On. Brought to you by Mulford Holdings. In second place, Josh Richardson. He drove well as well, he kept the chase on Maddie Stewart the entire race but Maddie Stewart very very pleased to see her pick up a race win here tonight at Custom Signs Beachlands Speedway well a pretty solid field of super saloons folks at the moment on the uh, the dummy grid so uh, looking forward to seeing them put on a show here tonight as well of course they are racing for the uh, Otago Super Saloon Championship but put your hands together folks for this young lady car number 828 Maddie Stewart a well put together win here. So Maddie Stewart takes it out. 
Josh Barlow in second place, then uh, Ashley Bennett in car number 73 in third. Max Kemp in fourth place, Jaden Cronholm in fifth, Caden Ray six, ahead of Max Fleet in seventh. Uh, Crew Soper home in eighth place, Maya Johnson in ninth in car number 23. Racing Ray Stewart, car number 34 from Central Motor Speedway, lines up alongside Greg Johnson. Greg was an absolutely white hot form last weekend at Central Motor Speedway. Three race wins over the weekend. Ricky Bolton in the 861. Matt Green, car number 59, starts from the third row of the grid. Then we've got Alice the Lister in car number four. Matt Summerfield out there as well as we go. Green here. You and sharing. On the inside, Mark Osborne with a fiery start down into uh, turn one and two. Of course, he's the man that uh, you, he builds these cars. He wasn't expecting to be cutting any laps here this afternoon. Basically, he got chucked some race gear and said, there you go, Mark, you can go out and drive the car. So he leads this one here. Ewan Shearing in second place. Then we go back to Racing Ray Stewart, Greg Johnson, Ricky Bolton, Matt Green, Alistair Lister, Trevor Elliott, Owen Dixon out there, car number 95. Then we've got Matt Summerfield and Barry Redpath. That's your race order, a couple of laps into this one. Osborne at the moment looking racy. Through Lammermoor Station corner, onto the main straight. Ewan Shearing still chasing hard. A lot of sparks coming out of the back of the lead car. Looks impressive. Through three and four, so... Uh, Things sparking up in the back of that car. We'll keep an eye on that. Sharing, he's in the box seat at the moment. Car 69, currently in second place. He's got a bird's eye view of what's going on up front with Mark Osborne. Ray Stewart thinks about having a look on the inside of car 69, Ewan Shearing. Ricky Bolton, he's in a good battle at the moment with the gas car sponsor machine of Greg Johnson, car number 77. That's the Hyper Mac and the uh, Pro X. Then we go back to Matt Green, Alistair Lister, Trevor Elliott, Owen Dixon, Matt Summerfield and Barry Redpath. Osborne through once more. Ewan Shearing, he's doing a great job, car number 69, managing to hold off racing Ray Stewart in car 34. As I mentioned before, he was really finding some form last weekend, Ewan Shearing. He was selling that car at one stage, but uh, decided to uh, give it another crack. Alistair Lister right out on the wall there, comes down on Matt Green, side by side. So a lot of congestion further back in the pack. Oh, contact there, that's Owen Dixon, hard into the wall, coming out of turn and number two, car 95. We see a, a caution, couple of laps to run. So Mark Osborne leads them around. Ray Stewart in behind him, then Ricky Bolton. Lights are out, we'll get a start this time around. Mark Osborne heads them down the main straight. Stewart tucks in behind. He's coming under pressure early in this one here from Ricky Bolton. Then we go back to Johnson, Matt Green. He's off to a flyer in this one here. He's managed to pull away from Lister. You can just see Trevor Elliott trying to uh, put some pressure on Lister, trying to make a way through the uh, Elliott scaffolding. Sponsored car 27 out of Woodford Glen Speedway. Matt Summerfield, of course, a seasoned rally car driver. He's currently behind Trevor Elliott. Then we go back to Barry Redpath. So Ricky Bolton now starting to put pressure on Ray Stewart. Well, there's been contact with the wall for car number four. Once again, the old telltale sign is when the control tower here shakes. And this time around, it's Alistair Lister. He's going to find his way down to the infield. In fact, no, it looks like he's going to keep going. No, he's not. Back to the infield for uh, car four. All sorts of uh, trouble happening in the back of that car by the looks of it, the way it bounced in there. 
So just uh, noticing the cars at around three and four at the moment. Must be a couple of ruts just starting to develop down there. And a couple of these cars looking a little bit unsettled around the Lammermoor Station corner. So Osborne at the moment it is out of uh, Woodford Glen Speedway. He leads this one here in second. Racing Ray Stewart and Ricky Bolton in third place. So uh, a race win for car number 891. Mark Osborne, he takes this one here out. Ray Stewart in second place. Ricky Bolton, a nice drive by Ricky Bolton. He challenged. He was happy to settle for third place. Greg Johnson in fourth. River Elliott up to fifth place. Matt Summerfield in sixth. Then we go back to Matt Green in seventh, Barry Redpath in eighth, and of course Alistair Lister and Ewan Shearing both parked up down there on the infield. Lister there um, as well as Owen Dixon. So uh, yeah, a couple of cars not finishing this one here, but a, a pretty solid race win of 15.926 for Mark Osborne behind the wheel of the 891. So Mark will take the... Uh, Chicken flag on a victory lap here. Of course, that race brought to you by Lister Helicopters. Coming up next, looks like stock cars lined up on the dummy grid. They're uh, set and ready to do battle here for the Clements and Stevens panel beaters. Heat number four, of course, they're racing over the, uh, the two nights of action. So we'll be back with stock cars here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway in just a moment. It's action for the whole family. With 23 tracks around New Zealand, there is no better way to spend your weekends than at a Speedway New Zealand track. Here they come to the start finish line again. again. There's something for the whole family. Sprint cars, saloons, stock cars, sidecars, midgets and much, much more. Pack up the family and make a trip to adrenaline-filled, action-packed bashes and crashes that only Speedway can deliver. Visit www.speedway.co.nz to find out the track nearest to you. Speedway, it's our summer thing. It doesn't matter how hard the job is, we suck it up and get it done. No matter how dirty our hands have to get, we suck it up and get it done. Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for suck's sake, suck it up, suck it up. Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz Out, lights are out, lights are out. So Zane to put a pass up on the main straight. He was good to watch here last night. He's obviously uh, here to do some stirring tonight. So McLennigan leads this one here. They head off down the back straight. Shannon Simon in second place. Then we go back to Mike Holly. Liam Squire, Nico Tahura, Simon into the wall. Mike Holly gets a bit of a tidy up by here. Liam Squire on the way through. Oh, Zane Tahura has been down to by car five. Rylan Annabelle, so a uh, bit of his own medicine down back to him. Simon, she goes around. That was uh, Zara Lee Tahura, put a spin on Simon. Mike Holly into the wall on the main straight. New race leader though, the tank of Zach McLennigan. He leads this one here. Nico Tahuda up to second place. Then we go back to Liam Squire. Squire racing right down the inside. The can-do fishing machine moves up to second place. Nico Tahuda just gives him a wee bit of a tap as they uh, hit around there. Then we go back to Shannon Simon. So Ryan and about the quickest on track at the moment. A 22.03, fastest lap of the race. But he's down the order at the moment. He's in fifth place Squire goes a little bit wide there Nico Tahuda and Shannon Simon duck up the inside of Liam Squire 
So Adam Neighbour, a little bit of cat and mouse going on down here with Zane Tehuda. Tehuda was, of course, the man who uh, caused some carnage by stopping on the start line. He's just gone and put Savannah Simon into the wall down there in turn number two. He sat behind Neighbour and he waited for the uh, Simon car to come around and off to the wall. So Adam Neighbour, he's on the infield down there between turns number three and four, manages to get back on. McLennigan leads this one from Nico Tahuda and Shannon Simon. So down the back straight they go. Liam Squire still sitting in behind Shannon Simon. And of course that's uh, Ryland Annabelle there as well. A new fastest lap, a 19.744 by Paul Simon. There'll be three laps to run when Zach McLennigan brings the uh, 52 machine past, which he does now. So McLennigan leads. And behind him, Nico Tahura. Then we go back to Ryland Annabelle. He's pretty quick out there at the moment. Consistent. He's starting to work his way through the field. He's the man that picked up two race wins last night. Liam Squire, right front on his car. Dead flat. He goes to the infield to Squire. Pulls him on right in behind Ryland Annabelle. Here comes Nico Tahuta for the lead of this race. Ducks up the inside of McLennigan. So we have a new race leader. They got past Zane Tahuta. White flag is out. One more lap to go. And it's Nico Tahuta in front of this one here. McLennigan. The Ryko sponsored machine has a look on the inside. Had to pull himself up though. He almost uh, carried too much pace. Down in between one and two. So Nico Tahuta will come on to the main straight here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway and take out the first race of the night. For stock cars, McLennigan will come home in second place. Shannon Simon, in fact that's Mike Holly and uh, Adam Neighbour having a bit of a coming together on the main straight. But a well driven race by Nico Tahuta. He was patient, he waited, found his way past McLennigan. He took this one here out. McLennigan in second place. Trayson, Ryland, Annabelle up to third. Paul Simon in fourth place. Shannon Simon in fifth. Zara Lee Tahuta in sixth place. Mike Holly in seventh. Savannah Simon in eighth. Zane Tahuta in ninth. And uh, Liam Squire in car number 948. We've got Scott Casey on the screen there, so I'll find out who's behind the wheel of that machine, whether it's Scott, whether it's Liam. folks Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks heat number four and we're going to see uh, car number 77 start from the front row of the grid of course uh, car number 77 pretty sure that's uh, Corey Schumacher of course he lines up beside Kerry Campbell car number 12 from Dunedin Sean Andrew car number 46 starts from third alongside his partner Mitch Lavender in car number triple five 
Steve Dryden starts car 33 from fifth on the grid alongside his partner Brett Bauer in car number 99. Chris Gerges who starts from seventh in the 86 alongside the Hulk, Craig Blackler in car number eight. AJ Lampsley had that rollover last night. He will start from ninth. Then we've got him alongside Gillies in car number 417. Uh, Jordan O'Connell in car number 94. He will line up alongside his partner, Scott Palmer, uh, car number 315. Next we go back to Finch in car number 26, starting from 13th alongside Hughes in the 317. A new driver for tonight. Ben Turner, car number 15, starts from 15th alongside Adams in car number 475. Next row back, 17th on the grid. John O'Garthley, your points leader at the moment. And of course, uh, Scott Ashton, he will start car number 61 from 18th. Kenneth starts from 19th on the grid in car 23 alongside Jacob Campbell, the Muppet, from 20th. Car number four, John O'Bower, he starts from 21st alongside Matt Stewart in the 828. Jones starts the 2NZ car from 23rd alongside Josh Murdoch, car number 83. 25th on the grid, Regan Constable. He's actually been scratched from tonight. Can't get his car going. So his teammate, Jake Barr, car number 732, will be out there all on his lonesome. Paul Leslie, the 1NZ, starts from 27th with uh, Adam Stewart in 634, starting from 28th. Dylan McCaddy, car 10 from Riverside. He will start that car from 29th on the grid. Ben Jenkins on his outside. His teammate starting 345 right at the tail of this field. So hitting anti-clockwise direction for the first heat of the night. 2NZ out there, of course, uh, Mike Jones. He got absolutely hammered last night. He was uh, just constantly in the wrong place at the wrong time. He'll be hoping for a better run here tonight. Dylan McCaddy, car number 10, tucks in behind the 1NZ of Paul Leslie. That's right down the uh, the far end of town. Right there. Lights out, lights out. Over 30 street stocks on the grid here, folks. Set to do battle. The Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks. And it's Schumacher in car number 77 and Kelly Campbell on the front row of the grid. Don't forget, folks, they are lined up alongside their partner. Watch for Bauer and car. Oh, Bauer and car number 99. As soon as I mentioned him, straight into the wall there. Steve Dryden off to a good start in this one as well. He's looking for a way out the inside of Andrew, car number 33. Josh Murdoch gets spat out down the uh, the back straight, but out in front, car 77, Corey Schumacher and Kelly Campbell. Of course, they were well up on points after night one. Adam Stewart going to town on car four of Bauer. A lot of smoke coming out of the back of uh, Bauer's car, car number four, the pink machine, and Adam Stewart, he's really got him in his sights at the moment. Chris Kirgazoo trying to find a way through there. Adam Stewart down onto the infield. Oh, Finch, he gets all crossed up on the main straight here. Backs it down to the infield. It's a wise move to, uh, to get down there, of course, with all these cars ripping around here the way they are. So look at the back end of the 315 machine of Palmer. That whole, oh, big contact on the main straight down here. Dryden, Matt Stewart and Bauer. So, of course, Dryden and Bauer teamed up. Dryden trying to find a way past Matt Stewart, just bullying his way through. Matt Stewart, an absolute sitting duck down there at the moment. He'd be wanting to get that car spun around, because at the moment, not in a favourable position. And if he brings on the red, it'll be a DNF for Matt Stewart. Doesn't need that. This is the uh, same situation that Ben Biss Bissett faced last night. But uh, Stewart is going to head down to the infield. He probably spin the car around down there and get back on track or is he actually going to park the 8-2-8 up looks like he's going to so Stewart out of this one John O'Bower from Riverside parked up, he's a sitting duck down there on the inside of turn 1 and 2 no caution so far in fact the red light comes on right on cue Braden uh, Adams brings his car down to the infield as well, car number 475 so issues for Adams, perhaps. Oh, yeah. So he'll get a helping hand down to the infield. So plenty of action. Just looking at the monitor here that uh, Pitts TV have provided me up here to catch it. Finch very, very lucky not to be uh, cleaned up by Paul Leslie on the way down the main straight there. He was probably lucky that it fired to the infield. Steve Dryden absolutely doubt to Matt Stewart. 
but in doing that he tangled up Brent Bauer. Bauer of course is Dryden's teammate, he could have uh, looked for a way through there because he got tangled up in that hit that Dryden put on Matt Stewart, ultimately leading to Matt Stewart parking up down on the infield. Car number 15, Ben Turner heading down there as well. Of course, I'm pretty sure he was teamed up with uh, Braden Adams. So, yeah, Dr uh, Dryden, just looking at that replay again, he spun Matt Stewart, but he sent him directly in front of uh, Bauer, his teammate. Out, lights out. So, lights are out. Green flag drops. Through goes AJ Lapsley, Campbell, and Leslie. Then we see Dylan McCaddy, car number 10, started right at the rear of the field. The two NZ of Jones, he's up to seventh place ahead of Ashton, Jenkins, and O'Connell rounding out your top 10. Linear cars heading into turn number one and two at the moment. Dylan McCaddy goes around, gets a helping hand. He spins up down there in turn and number two. He should get going again though. McCaddy backs it up to the wall just to get a clear run back onto the straight. Jacob Campbell comes through. Chris Kruger, so he's in a good battle out there at the moment as well. But your race leader is Corey Schumacher. Car number 77, Lavender up to second place. Then Garthley, he's riding the points again. Kerry Campbell in car number 12, currently in fourth place. So there's your race leader. Car 77 goes through. Lavender, car triple five. Not too uh, far away from the 77. There is a car between them. Looks to be uh, Chris Kurgazu, car number 86 out of Riverside between the man in first and the man currently in second place, which is Lavender. Then we see Garthley come through. He's in third place at the moment. Big flame right out of the back of the 35 machine. He's the fastest man on track at 20.492 for John O'Garthley. He goes up the inside of Jacob Campbell on the back straight. You can see Bauer there, car 99. Just start circulating at the moment on the outside. Just collecting points. 11 to last time around. A 21 116, a 21 296 for Schumacher. So 11 to slightly quicker. And then, of course, John O'Garthley. He's down in the uh, 20.4 bracket. So he's chasing hard. Just notice the uh, right front guard of AJ Lapsley. He had an issue with that last night, which actually brought out a red light. He got sent to the infield for that guard flapping around, and it's happened again. Steve Dryden there. Right front of his. Absolutely given way, so he's gone to the infield as Dryden. So that's going to hurt the points for them, of course. Bauer, his teammate, he's struggling around out there at the moment, also. Ashton trying to unsettle AJ Lapsley. Pushes him out wide, goes down the inside of Lapsley and Blackler. Mike Jones is right there as well in the 2NZ. Your race leader, still Schumacher, car number 77. Ben Jenkins thinks about giving Craig Blackler a bit of a helping hand. He's a previous winner of the Battle of the Street Stocks as the whole Craig Blackler. White flag is out. One more lap to run. And it's still Schumacher in control of this one here. He leads from car triple five, Mitch Lavender. Certainly been plenty of action, but it's going to be Schumacher who takes it out, grabs a... Uh, Handy fistful of points for his combination. In second place, Lavender, car triple five. Still some rubbing and shaking going on out there after the flag. So two more heats to run for the Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks. You can tell that it's just all starting to heat up. The hits are coming in. Schumacher takes this one here out. In fact, Garthley got himself up into second place so uh, good points for him in this one here as well so Schumacher takes it out John O'Garthley in second Mitch Lavender in third place Sean Andrew in fourth Scott Ashton home in fifth place Mike Jones your two in at home in sixth Ben Jenkins in seventh Craig Blackler in eighth Paul Leslie in ninth and Jordan O'Connell ins in tenth place then we go back to Chris Kirgis who cut number 86 in 11th Jacob Campbell in 12th Dwayne Kennett in 13th 
Uh, Clint Gillies in the 417 in 14th. Dylan McCaddy, 15th. Josh Murdoch, 16th. Jake Barr, home in 17th. Adam Stewart, he was involved in everything. He got home in 18th place. And, of course, we've seen Dryden head to the infield. Kelly Campbell down in 20th. That's going to hurt that team's points. Scott Palmer, 315, 21st position. Brett Bauer limped home. Car number 99 in 22nd. Braden Adams, we've seen him go to the infield. 23rd, Clinton Fitch in 24th. Matt Stewart, 25th. Ben Bissett in uh, the 317. Of course, he's not behind the wheel of that car. We've got uh, Sean Hughes behind the wheel of that machine there in uh, 26th. Ben Turner, 27th. John O'Bower, 28th. Dylan McCaddy, uh, 28th, it says as well. He was 29th. And AJ Lapsley, 30th. So, uh, interesting. They'll uh, head back to the pit area. They'll uh, all chip in, try and get as many cars fixed and back out on track for heat number three just a little bit later on. As I take a look out the commentary box window, we see modified sprints lined up on the dummy grid. We'll take a quick pause for the cause and be back with modified sprint action here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. <laughs> Uh, that was a pretty good drive. It's probably one of the better ones you've had uh, over the last couple of days. Must be happy with the way the car's going. Yeah, no, it's going really good. Uh, trying a new diff ratio and tyre size, and it's paying off. So, good for getting a bit of speed out of the old girl, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, know, you don't come here to go slow, do you, sir? So. Well, I suppose the track's pretty tacky still out there. I thought I might have dusted up a wee bit, but it seems to be just hanging there. Bit rutty in places, though, is it? Yeah, a bit rutty. I think I lost my back spring, so she was bouncing a wee bit. But, um, Plenty of drive, so. Yeah, I suppose uh, that's why they're jacking the car up. Obviously, replace that spring. Yeah. Is about all, is that all you're going to do for the next race? You're pretty happy the way it's gone. Yeah, a wee bit of fuel, and we should be into it. Okay, so tell us, um, who's your partner? Uh, Kelly Campbell, 12D. Oh, that's a good partner to have, and he's going to help you out uh, in the next couple of races. That's for sure. Yeah, he's someone I'd rather have on my team than uh, work against. So. Yeah, good stuff. Good sponsors, mate. Who looks after you? Uh, I don't really run too many. Um, my brother Brandon helps out a lot with a bit of cash. Um, and then oh, Rangiora Mirror and Glass, Richmond Radiators and Exhaust, and North Canterbury Engine Reconditioners. They just just tell me to sort off if you need me to sort off. But you can see, uh, I've just started now, so we'll break away. But just get in there quickly, you can see what's happened to Steve's car. Look at that. The whole thing's been ripped out. Get right in there, Mr. Cameraman. And uh, that's basically the problem of why Steve um, has uh, got some issues, but we'll talk to him when we come back after this race. We'll head it over to Daryl. So modifying sprints out on track. Their first race of the night. Shane McKenzie, car number 16, off to an absolute flyer of a start. Of course, a former street stock 2NZ. And of course, he jumped into a stock car after that. And here he finds himself in modified sprints. He's being chased by Jaden Fraser, car number 36 out of Riverside. Two race wins last night for Fraser. He was the, uh, the man to beat here. But McKenzie, every time he gets out on track, he's making improvements. And here he finds himself in front of Jaden Fraser. Fraser closing that gap, though. Vernon Helms looking racy in third place. He's had some trouble this season. Said to me last night that he just can't get that car right. It was a flyer last year, but he's looking pretty good in this one here. He's in third place, and he's battling with Johnson. Johnson won a race We're here last night, so uh, certainly... Encouraging signs for Vernon Helms. Johnson goes past him. Then we go back to Mason Whelan and Michael Gimlet right at the tail of the field. So McKenzie comes through the Rota Dick sponsored car at a Beachland Speedway. His first season of racing in car number 16. Jaden Fraser, the 36, in second place. 
fastest lap just set by Jaden Fraser. He's right on that rear bar of the 16 machine. He's ready to pounce. He's setting himself up. Of course, this race brought to you by Caltex City North. McKenzie still leading 15-3-5-1 versus a 15-3-20 last time around. Great battle down the back straight. Checkered flag will come out. Cam McKenzie bank himself a race win. The young fella will be absolutely pumped. Well done, Shane McKenzie. That may well be his first modified sprint win. If it is, he'll be absolutely brimming with confidence. Shane McKenzie takes it out from Jaden Fraser. In second place, then we go back to Glenn Johnson, car number 23 in third place. Vernon Helms in fourth, ahead of Mason Whelan and Michael Gimlet. Well done, Shane McKenzie. Stoked for you, my friend. Taking out a race win here tonight at uh, Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Just had a few messages come through, folks, saying the, uh, the music's a little bit loud out there, so uh, I'll just radio through uh, to JC. He's going to come up and sort that out for me. So, uh, unfortunately... Uh, I know how to talk into one of these things. I'm just uh, not too good at tweaking the buttons. So uh, Shane McKenzie there. Stalls car number 16. Grabbing the checkered flag. I'll uh, have him on about that a wee bit later on. Best time of the race for him was a 15-3-5-1. Give the young fella a bit of a round of applause, folks, as he heads around. Takes out a race win here. Well, coming up next, folks, round two of racing. Saloons lined up on the dummy grid, set and ready to go. Their second race brought to you by the McLean family. Okay, folks, here we are down in the pits. We just had a wee look at Steve Dryden's car before we broke away. We bit there, Steve. You're not sure what actually happened. It must have been something red then, was it? No, I think it started going wonky in the first heat. Lost brakes in the first corner. So, yeah, I'd say possibly something's going to happen for quite some time. Okay, so it just was obviously when that hit that you had, you come off that uh, turn three, hit the wall, and then took a couple of cars out, so probably perhaps that's something that jolted it at and um, it sort of turned it all to toast. Yeah, probably did, you never know, can't even see what's going on, but yeah, a lot of action happening out there. Well, there's a lot of cars out there, Steve. Eh? Hey? It'd be the most action you've had all week. <laughs> it probably is, eh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, so you're going to get it fixed, obviously, and be back out there again? We'll try as long as we can get a disc and a caliper somewhere. Either that or we'll run with three brakes. Don't need a right front. <laughs> Jesus, here we go. All right, Steve, obviously, he's got Steve's autos on the side of his car. We will let him carry on because he's got a bit of work to do. They're working on Dylan McCaddy's car here. He's obviously flipped the belt off by the looks of this. Um, let's get in there and we'll see if we can get our cameraman in there. So these guys are, are hardcore working on trying to get a belt onto that. This is one of the things that happen quite common in street stocks is that the engine revs that they pull, uh, obviously they flip belts up quite a bit. And what's the uh, the problem with that? Well, you lose your power steering and also you uh, obviously lose your water pump as well. So that's when you start getting into the territory of uh, what's going to happen with the motor. Dylan, mate, obviously you flipped the belt, did it? Yeah, flicked the belt. Uh, I'm guessing there's a bit of oil coming out the butt on the sumps. Uh, it's not, not very good. Um, I mean, it doesn't do too much damage, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So the idea is obviously just chuck another belt on and cross your fingers and hope like you can get some next two heats. Pretty much, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, try and find the leak, sort that, and put the belt back on and hope for the best. Oh, yeah. Jesus, mate, well, best of luck. Uh, probably a good time now to thank your sponsors if you can. <laughs> you might need them. Yeah, yeah, got a few there. Um, there's Bow Repairs, um, Preston Street Auto Wreckers, Bob Christie Auto Painters, uh, Science Solutions, um, Self and Sandblasting, um, yeah, it's just to name a few. Yeah, they help us out and that they make it possible to travel and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's awesome. So, yeah. Good stuff, mate. Well, best of luck. Hopefully you get it all sorted out. I'm sure we're going to know pretty quickly how this is going to turn out, aren't we? Uh, pretty much, yes. <laughs> Good to see the boys on to uh, that car fixing it. So the lights are out here, folks. We are set and ready to go. Travis Smith on the inside. Mark Dobson on the outside. Dobson sets the pace and leads him down to turn number one and two here. The Paul McDonald Earth Moving Corner gets off to a nice start. Stretches away from Jason Gold. Jason Gold and Mark Dobson have had some absolutely amazing battles over the last month of racing. Anywhere that uh, Mark Dobson has been, Jason Gold has been right on his tail. Aaron Andrews goes through. Ashton Osborne. He's working his way up through the field now as well. He's up to fourth place, just got past Smith. Then we go back to Greer, car number 33. Bennett in the 66, tucks in behind Greer. They're all on the main straight. A great sight here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Wayne Bennett, car number 67. He comes through as well. 
Then Calvin Todd, car six at the tail of the field, a relatively new driver. Out in front though, still car 51, that cold trickle look-alike, love that car. Gotta love me some days of thunder. And it's Mark Dobson at the moment, a new car for him. Of course, if you remember back to the Brian FM series right at the start of this season, that car there got absolutely burnt to a crisp after a big incident down there in turn number one, right where Mark's getting into at the moment. So a good comeback from Dobson. Half a straight length lead at the moment over Jason Gold. Jason Gold, he's had uh, his issues this season as well. He's been quick, but he's had uh, a few little crashes and bits and pieces. Mark Dobson last time around a 16-7, 16-9 for Jason Gold. So Mark Dobson clearing off from the opposition. Here comes Osborne with a big look down the inside of Aaron Andrews. Can he get the job done? No, he can't. Andrews covers. Aaron Andrews probably done more laps around this track here than any other competitor. Used to actually race a uh, production saloon many years ago against one Aaron Andrews. That was way back in the day. We were both about uh, 18 years of age, I think. So Mark, Dos uh, Mark Dobson still in full control of this one here. There'll be two laps to run when Dobson comes through this time around. Oh, Osborne got right up on two wheels around turn number uh, three and four. He just settles 16 down and gets back into a rhythm once more. Through a Lammermore Station corner, Mark Dobson, car 51, heads through. White flag comes out. He's had one race win in that car so far this season. That came last weekend at Central Motor Speedway. He's looking the goods here tonight to take out heat number two for saloons. Brought to you by the McLean family. It's going to be Mark Dobson. Who takes this one here out? Jason Gold, a solid second for him. He'll be stoked with that. And Aaron Andrews comes home in uh, third place. A Hypermac 1 2 3 in heat number two for Saloons. Mark Dobson takes it out. 2.6 second great, win great, over Jason Gold. Aaron we'll Andrews in third place. Court, Ashton Osborne in three, fourth. Three, Travis three, Smith came home in fifth place. Shane Greer, car number 33, come home in sixth. The head of Ryan Bennett, car number 66 and seventh. And Wayne Bennett, car number 67 and eighth place. Calvin Todd retired to the infield. So uh, a good race too for Saloons here tonight at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Coming up next, we're gonna see another race for classic street stocks brought to you by Anderton Decorating. Okay, so we're just down in here in the pits and stuff. He's got some good sh uh, shots of what's happening with uh, Matt Stewart's machine, the A28D. Uh, they are frantically working on the right rear of this machine and seemingly got a bit of a snot, uh, which involves Steve Dryden, which is probably why Steve's brakes aren't working too well. So they're trying to get a, a, a lot repaired, of course, not right at the start of the meeting. A lot of people don't understand 828 Matt Stewart. He does, he's a club president here. And uh, before this meeting even starts, he's been out here since about about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock this morning, getting everything ready to go for this meeting. And of course, he puts his car preparation on hold to make sure the meeting's going to go okay. So right at the start of the meeting, they didn't even have a starter motor for the poor thing. So you can see brother uh, Adam Stewart's now come over to help as well. Uh, everybody's trying to do everything they can. Uh, to, to get him back on the track. Of course, uh, we can see this whole bum of this car sort of being rebuilt. Uh, it's amazing how much work goes in down the pits here. We can see people swapping parts. There's lots going on. Like, uh, there's a lot of work going on some cars. There's some other guys who haven't had so many issues. A couple of Christchurch boys down the other end there, mate. They are severely damaged and they've got a whole beat bunch of people working around them. And it's just amazing how everybody goes out there, they wreck each other, and then they come back, uh, you know, into the pits and they start piecing each other and they're swapping parts. We can see Dryden running around. Uh, with a, a brake um, caliper, uh, yeah, just to get himself back on the track again. Everybody pitches in to help out. So, uh, a wee bit of work going on on the 12D of Kelly Campbell's. You can see that directly across from me, Stiffy over there. You can see the boys are obviously working on something. They've started the car up. Uh, seem to be a lot of slipped belts. So, uh, maybe that's to do with the engine revs that these things are, are producing, getting uh, not so much all the horsepower down to the ground, but over revving causes the belt to pop off. Chris Cougars, who's running around the pits here, trying to help everybody and anybody he can. 
uh, to get them back out as well. But they're all ready to go. I think we'll see most of them back out again. Daryl, it's always entertaining this, this being down in here and you can see just the activity that's going on around the pitch. She's all go, mate, seriously. Yeah, and that's the thing, Jakes, is uh, the folks in the crowd here, they don't get to see any of that there. So, uh, of course, they're sitting back in their seat there watching the action on track and they don't get to see these teams just absolutely going for it. Like that footage that you just put out there, absolutely amazing. Everybody, all hands on deck. And of course, other teams helping um, rival teams, all trying to get them out. And that is what uh, the Sport of Speedway is about. It's so cool to watch. So uh, everybody just working frantically. Very, very cool indeed. And of course, still a couple of uh, heats to go of the Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks. But at the moment, of course, we wind back the clock. Classic street stocks out on track. The cars that we used to uh, watch years and years ago, the HQ Holdens, the uh, the, the uh, Valiants, the Falcons that uh, we threw on track and absolutely demolished. And it's good to see that uh, a lot of these cars being restored. And um, something that's actually growing throughout New Zealand is the classic street stocks. I follow a couple of pages on Facebook that, uh, that have them and uh, some great restorations I tell you something, done. Daryl, are you feeling hungry? Am I feeling hungry? Yeah, I'm well, always hungry, Jason. I bet you, you know five me? minutes after this race finishes, I'm going to grab Arnie Tahuta and I'm going to go over and show you a big, massive sheep on the spit. He wants to show people that if you race here at Beachland Speedway, what you get, uh, how well you get looked after. So after you've done this race, we'll grab him, we'll go over there, have a, have a bit of a yarn, and let's see if we can grab some meat for you. Legion, looking forward to it. Of course, Arnie out on track at the moment, car number 37. I've actually uh, been on the receiving end of a couple of uh, Arnie Tahuta's pigs on a spit. He does an absolutely fantastic job. So uh, he's certainly putting on the hospitality again here tonight at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. And it's Shane Anderson that leads him off. Car number 83 from Woodford Glen Speedway in Christchurch. Of course, uh, you might see the odds happen spin in this one here. It's almost a, a bit of a display grade now. Of course, the, uh, the parts are getting so hard to get for these cars. So uh, the guys don't want to go out there and completely wreck them because that would uh, just be silly. So through comes Anderton. Lockie McLean chasing hard. Hoon Richards is right there, Cuff on the outside, of course that machine of Cuffs, that was a uh, production saloon here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway, he raced for uh, a number of years here, he was a uh, certainly a great competitor in the production saloon, great, he's starting to put some pressure now on the Anderton decorating sponsored Valiant of Shane Anderton, he hits him down here to turns a one and two, Cuff chasing hard in second place. Oh, Anderton just uh, made a slight mistake coming out of turn two there. Just opened the the door for Cuff. He went right on through. McLean still holding second place. Then we go back to Hoon Richards and Artie Tahura in the Holden right at the uh, tail of the field. In fact, no, Bailey gone right at the tail of the field. Car number 39. He's about half a lap down. So Cuff sets sail down the back straight. Certainly a great way for uh, a lot of these competitors just to... Uh, Stay in the game, you might say. Get out of that whole competitive grade and just go out there and have a bit of fun, bit of nostalgia. Through comes Anderton, McLean, Hoon Richards. That car of Hoon Richards, what a cool looking car. Of course, the, uh, the two-door machine. They were a great shape. That valiant Arnie Tahura starting to wheel them in as Cuff goes past Bailey Gillum, car number 39. Hoon Richards and McClellan Freight sponsored car number 75. Just up ahead at the moment of Arnie Tahura. Of course, Arnie, he'll have his mind on that uh, pig on a spit at the moment. Probably not on racing. Trying to chase down the race leaders. Cuff goes through once more. He won heat number one here for Classic Street Stocks. Brought to you by Anderton Decorating. Lockie McLean still trying to get right up onto the back end of Shane Anaton, Gillum spins down there between one and two. Half a car length between second and third at the moment. Anderton got good drive out of turn number two. Hoon Richards not far off the pace now as well. The white flag is out. Starting to heat up for that second and third place. Lockie McLean having a look on the outside. Can he get around Anderton? He's looking good at the moment. Can he get a run out of two? He can. 
Here comes the race leader, which is Cuff, car 19. He will take this one here out. Second win of the evening. Lockie McLean's done well to get past Anderton. He's going to collect second place, the 187. Anderton home in a third place. Anderton into the wall hard, actually, down there in uh, turn number one. Certainly would have uh, shaken the bones a little bit, but that is the second race of classic street stocks here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. That race brought to you by Anderton Decorating. So Gary Cuff, he takes this one here out. Just looking out onto the dummy grid, seeing what's coming up next. Looks like we're going to have a youth saloons their second heat of the evening. Of course, it was Matty Stewart that took out race number one. And that's brought to you by Stewart Motorsport. They'll be on track here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway next. number on that outside car that may well be car number 21 Jasmine Todd so either Jasmine Todd or uh, no Todd further down the track that may well be Maya Johnson car number 23 both black cars pink numbers but it's uh, gonna be Max Camp car number 36 gets on the loud pedal goes right around the outside of Johnson, his mate Cron not too far away as well. Jaden Cron moves up into second place. These guys have had some absolutely immense battles over the season and they've wasted no time whatsoever getting to the front of this field. Brooks Oper, car number eight, the custom sign sponsored car, trying to find a way through. Currently down in fourth place, tucks in behind Johnson. Noah Kiddo on the inside. Great to see the Kiddo car back out on track. 65, Caitlin Bennett on the infield. Out of this one here early, but it's Max Kemp, car number 36. Down the main straight here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Leads this one here. Maya Johnson now getting into a real rhythm. She's starting to uh, pull away from Brooke Soper. Then we go back to Kiddo. Oh, there's trouble down there in uh, turn number one and two. That's young uh, Max Fleet, car number 16, involved in that one. Hopefully Max can get that car fired back up and going. Doesn't manage to, so uh, the yellow light comes on. And a caution in race number two for Youth Saloons. So Max Kemp, car 16. Spins here in turn and number two. Causing a restart. So uh, they will line up once more. Max manages to get the... Uh, car fired up. We're just going to hit quickly down to the pits while the youth saloons fire up. Jason's down there with Ani Tahuda. I, I, I tell you, Daryl, it's Guy. lucky the wind's blowing the other way tonight because if it was blowing this towards us, mate, we'd be down here hogging this. But i got Ani Tahuda with me. He's just finished the race in the, in the classic street stocks in the old 37. And Ani, we'll just get Stiffy to swing around in here. But have a look at this. This is what happens when you come to Beachland Speedway for a big meeting. Look at that. Look at that there, people. I hope you're all hungry tonight and out there. We've got enough food in there to feed 200 people. And out there, so that's what we do every time we have a big meeting and out there we always feed for the whole club. So whoever comes in for prize giving tonight out there, we're putting a big feed on for you and it's all for nothing. And that's just the way we do for hospitality when you come down to the South Island, especially to um, Dunedin, like I cook twice a year for the club and out there and that's how we sort of feed everyone and out there and this is what Southern hospitality is all about. So, you know, any of you travelling drivers, you know, want to come to a big meeting here and you're going to get an awesome feed at the end and nice cold beer as well, and that's what we all like. I can actually hear Daryl dribbling on his microphone about now. He's getting yeah, a, I think uh, it's going to short circuit yeah, in a minute if we get <laughs> enough dribble into the microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we hear a big fizz and a big bang upstairs, you know what's <laughs> happened, eh? Uh, and it's just amazing, and it, I suppose it, it really it is true. If you want to come down here and race, as long as it's a reasonably big meeting, yeah. Arnie's going to look after you, aren't you? Look after you, and that's the whole thing, you know. Like We want travelling drivers to come here. You know, and we know, it's, you know, it's a long way to come in here, but like we try and put a good feed on for them 
And, that, yeah, and that's what it's all about, the hospitality. Right, we'll be let you go back to your car. I know you've just come out of the out of the hot seat. So back over to Daryl, you mate. You got the rest of the uh, youth saloons to get through. Yeah, he's not even sweating, young Arnie. Like he could he's almost not race either. He's pretty already. damn good. I don't know what's going. Maybe it's this Kojak hairstyle yeah, that's he, doing he, it, Daryl. He should be back racing like competitive. Like you, Jason. We're getting a bit older. <laughs> it's a bit older, a bit like Daryl. He's definitely old. He, he, he can't even. He's been off on a drive. We'll get back into the racing, oh, folks. <laughs> Uh, car number 36, Max Kemp leads him down to uh, turn a number one and two. Kane Howard, car number 99, goes to the infield. Jaden Crom tucks him behind, a nice move deep. Under breaks down into turns number three and four, side by side. Crom gets a little crossed up, he keeps the foot hard up and down under the pole line there. He certainly was not going to uh, back off. But out in front it is still Kemp, car number 36. Heads off down the back straight, down towards the Lammermoor Distillery Corner. Cronin behind him. Brooks Hoper managed to get a move made at that restart. Up to third place. And we go back to Noah Kiddo, Josh Richardson, Caden Racer, two Riverside cars side by side down there in turns number one and two. Then we go back to Johnson Bennett. Max Fleet, car number 16. Dresden Constable about to uh, have some company there very, very shortly. Oh, Max Camp, his car is absolutely given way down there in front of the uh, the control tower. She smoke signals down there between one and two. He was absolutely wringing the neck of that car. Heard it valve bouncing when it come past just a moment ago. I wasn't sure if it was his car or Kron's, but uh, that'll be it for uh, young Camp. He parks up down there on the infield. Spectacular scenes from the young bloke. And in fact, there is actually a uh, fire under his car. So we will go to yellow. They will sort that out. There is a fire under the uh, 36 machine. So the fire crew will see them rip around here pretty smartly. Sap motor absolutely let go. Kemp getting out of it. Really need to uh, get in there and get that extinguished. It certainly caught on. So uh, the crew there now sorting that out. So not the way that young Max Kemp would have wanted to uh, finish his season of youth saloon racing. He was in an absolutely epic battle. He just went past the pit gate and it absolutely let go. I could hear it coming past the commentary box. And I've got headphones on, folks, and I could hear that thing going ping, ping, ping the whole way down. But I wasn't sure whether it was him or Crom because these young used to learn drivers, they've got these things absolutely on the limiter. Of course, don't forget a little bit later on, folks, of course, the Pacific Auto Parts Street stock chains race. Looking forward to uh, seeing the carnage that unfolds in that there. It was entertaining last year. And uh, of course, it'll be just as entertaining this time around. Just had a wee photo message come through from Mark Dobson, the winner of that saloon race. He sent me a photo of himself with the uh, checkered flag saying, just in case you missed it. Well, uh, Mark, I didn't miss it. I was up here, mate. I was calling it. But uh, just a wee bit of banter between the, uh, the driver of car number 51 and myself. So uh, making sure that I swore that checkered flag. Speaking of flags, green one drops. We go racing. Kron leads this one here. Off to a handy start at the moment. Half a dozen car lengths early through one corner. Richardson trying to apply the pressure to Noah Kiddo. Kiddo trying to put the pressure on Brooks Oper. Oh, Richardson right up the inside there of uh, Kiddo. Thought he was going to get the move made, but he's actually lost a spot to young Caden Race. The Deborah's nothing but dirt. Honda Civic out of Riverside. He's door handle to door handle at the moment with Noah Kiddo. Pushing each other hard. Richardson looking for a way through. Bennett's right there as well. Max Fleet, he's gone around for the second time in this one here. This time in turn number four. So Cron, Cron on the back straight. Soper, Noah Kiddo. In fact, looks like the uh, 
Checkered flag may well come out. They may call the result. They will call the result for this one here. So uh, that'll be it. Done and dusted for you saloons. This race brought to you by uh, Stuart Motorsport. And it'll be Cron, car number 29, who will take this one here out. Car number 8, Brooke Soper in second place. And a third will go the way of Noah Kiddo. So uh, this race has been called, folks. And it's going to be car number 29, Jaden Cron, who will uh, carry that chicken flag around on a victory lap. So Jaden Cron takes it out. Noah, uh, we had uh, Brooke Soper in second place. Then we went back to Noah Kiddo, Josh Barlow in fourth. Of course, the uh, lap would around back a lap. The results, Caden Race in 5th place, Maya Johnson in 6th, Ashley Bennett in 7th, Max Fleet of course who had that bit of a spin there in 8th place, Crew Soper in ninth, and Maddie Stewart in 10th place. Liking Cuff Willeman 11th, Jasmine Todd in 12th, Dresden Constable in 13th, Kate Howard of course uh, parked up on the infield down there in car 99, as was Caitlin Bennett car number 65. So there we go folks, we will take a quick pause for the cause coming up in just a moment. We are going to see Heat 2 of the Otago Super Saloon Championship right here at Custom Signs, Beachland Speedway. Red path car number 64 on the third row of the grid alongside Mark Osborne. Good to see you and Shearing back on track. Car 69, Greg Johnson, car 77, Racing Ray Stewart. Car number 34 and the 861 of Ricky Bolton. No Owen Dixon on track. That damage that he suffered earlier on, not repairable for the second heat. Lister gets off to a flyer. Trevor Elliott, a nice start from him as well. The Elliott scaffolding car number 27 slots into second place. Matt Green getting swallowed up down there at the moment. He's got all sorts of pressure on him. There was contact there with uh, Mark Osborne. Matt Summerfield on his inside. Greg Johnson, he's tucked in behind as well. You see that spark show on the back of Mark Osborne's car once again. You see a brake uh, disc rotor, something along those lines in there. Sparking away, certainly looks great under lights. Trevor Elliott now, look at him all down the inside of Alistair Lister. The Lister Helicopters sponsored car number four. Coming under all sorts of pressure from Trevor Elliott. Of course, Elliott, earlier this season, won the Debbie the Webster Super Saloon Cup. Mark Osborne up to third place. He's chasing hard. Nice move by Green around the outside. He's battling at the moment with both Bolton and Summerfield. Then we go back to Redpath. Oh, we see Osborne around there. He gets a, a bit of a tag on the way through might have been from Bolton I think that might have made a, a little bit of contact after he spun so that's the 891 heat one winner it was actually Mark Osborne so he will get that uh, machine fired up once more I would imagine but a good battle up front between Lister and Trevor Elliott so Osborne down the back of the field there, just de debating some real estate by the looks of it. Trying to grab a couple of spots. Don't know if he'll get away with that. You were the cause of the uh, the spin there, Mark. So best just to pop on in behind. Great capture uh, of footage there by Pitts Media, of course. Uh, as we mentioned all night, the sparks coming out from under that uh, 891 machine. Certainly looks spectacular. So watch for Mark Osborne now to uh, come from the rear of this field. He's got Ewan Shearing in front of him. But at the other end of town, we see Alistair Lister battling with Stewart. A nice start by Matt Green as well. He's got Summerfield in behind him. Ricky Bolton trying to find his way through as well. He's right up the inside of Summerfield. Side by side, down the back straight. 
Things start to tighten up. Mark Osborne, fastest lap, a 16.290 of the 891 machine. So Lister still leading this one here. Elliott in second place. Then we go back to Matt Green. Green looking racy. Ricky Bolton on the inside. Matt Green needs to uh, switch into that defensive mode. Otherwise, Bolton's going to take that spot and take it easy. Here comes Elliott. Oh, he thought about a look down the back straight. Lister shut the door. Green high and wide once more. Car 59, he's side by side with Bolton. And I imagine uh, Matt's wife, Bianca, she'll be giving him a bit of a rack up from behind the wire fence at the moment. Encouraging uh, her man on in this one here. It's a good drive by Matt Green. Oh, Lister, he's made a mistake between three and four. Takes a big chunk of pole line. Gets back on track. Just in time for Trevor Elliott to sneak onto the outside of him. They're still side by side. Down the back straight. There'll be four laps to run as they come on through. This race brought to you by Lister Helicopters. Here comes Elliott. Gets the overlap. The Elliott scaffolding. Hypermac now leads this one here. Ricky Bolton goes around the outside. In fact, he's got racing Ray Stewart right with him. So Stewart looking racy in the late stages of this one here. Then Matt Green, Mark Osborne, Ewan Cheering, and Barry Redpath. All cars are still on the same straight. So it's great racing here for the Super Saloons. They're racing for the Otago Championship. And it's Trevor Elliott in the box seat. Car number 27 at a Woodford Glen Speedway. Ricky Bolton looking for a way around the outside of Lister. He gets it done. So Bolton looking racy in the late stages also. Ray Stewart now. He's got Lister in his crosshairs. He's chasing hard. The white flag. Out for Trevor Elliott. Through comes Elliott. Bolton. Lister. Ray Stewart. Can Lister hold on for one more lap? Can he hold out racing Ray? Elliott. In full control. Bolton starting to really shorten that gap. Too little, too late. That was going to be Elliott that'll take it out. Over eight, uh, Ricky Bolton in the 861. Well done, Alistair Lister, home in third place. A nice drive led for the majority of this one. So Elliott takes it out over Bolton. Lister in third place. Ray Stewart in fourth. Matt Green, a nice drive up to fifth place. Ewan Shearing in sixth. Matt Summerfield in seventh. Barry Redpath in eighth place. Ninth was Mark Osborne and parked up down there on the infield. Greg Johnson, car number 77, given a tenth place. So a uh, chicken flag will be awaiting Trevor Elliott. His best lap time is 16.577. Stock cars on track next, folks, here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway.
St. Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Can Do Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed, and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Can Do Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products, and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Can Do Fishing Kinner, Fish, or Power. Can Do Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. Look at the course, heads in field, set for a start here. This race brought to you by Clements and Stevens panel beaters. Oh, there's going to be a big contact into the gate. And <laughs> yeah, that's Savannah Simon. Wasted no time whatsoever getting into Adam Neighbour. Absolutely down to him. She's absolutely grown with confidence in the stock car grade over the season. It's been absolutely fantastic to watch. Shannon Simon, it is O'Connor, number 26, who leads this one here. Nico Tahura in second place. Momentarily though, Ryland Annabelle right up the inside, pushes Tahura out towards the wall. Then we go back to, uh, looks like Greer, car number 17, Adam Neighbour, down on the infield there on turn number uh, four. So Nico Tahura chasing hard. That's your battle for second and third place. Then we go back to Greer, Paul Simon. Oh, McLennigan, so he gets a tidy up and sent down towards the uh, the gates here as well. That was Zane Tahuda that was paying some attention to him. Mike Holly right behind him. Then we go back to Zara Lee Tahuda. So Nico Tahuda tucks in behind Savannah Simon. Pushes her out towards the wall on the outside of turn and number two. They both pull out of that move. He takes her out towards the wall though on the exit of turn number two. Nothing in that one. Pulls him on, ducks right up the inside, gives Nico Tahuna a bit of a nudge on the way through for Pickett on his daughter. Tahuna gets Bart straight back to work on the number seven car. As I mentioned earlier on, there's been some entertaining racing between the uh, Simons and the Tahutas over the weekend. Zane Tahuna puts Holly into the wall right in front of the commentary box here. Savannah Simon parked up. So, uh, Savannah Simon parked up down there in turn number four, so that may lead to a red light coming out because uh, she hasn't moved away from there. In fact, she has now right on cue. Gets back down onto the uh, pole line and back into this race. So obviously just a wee bit of time to fire that machine up. Ryland Annabelle, we've got a car up on the wall down there in turn number two. And uh, we go red. So all sorts of action happening out on track here at the moment, and that's Mike Holly. He's been put up the wall there by Adam Neighbour. Car number 99. By the rule books, they'll get uh, a certain amount of time to separate themselves, and if they can't do that, of course, they will uh, get a little bit of help. So there's certainly been plenty of attention On uh, Savannah Simon, Nico Tahuda in this one here. It was Nico Tahuda that spat uh, Savannah Simon out towards the wall down there in uh, turn number four. Zane Tahuda, of course, he shook the uh, the commentary box for me, putting Mike Holly into the wall partway through this one here, and then Adam Neighbour, he's gone and uh, finished the job over in turn number two. Very, very cool to see, of course, all the, uh, the young fans trying to get up there and uh, check out what is going on from behind the wire fence. He will uh, take the long walk down to the infield. I'd imagine Adam Neighbour, he could possibly get himself uh, out of that situation, I would imagine. He's had his own battles tonight. Of course, he's had a bit of a target on his back. But dished out some of his, uh, some of his own here in race number uh, five for stock cars. Brought to you by Clements and Stevens Panel Beaters. Can tell you folks that we are going to have uh, Heat 5 for the Gillies Contracting Battle of the Street Stocks coming up next. So uh, looking forward to that. Of course, Jason showed us the footage before of everybody frantically working down in the pit area to get as many cars back on on track as possible. 
Alonso, green flag set to drop. So through comes car five. We've got him down here as the race leader going by the timing monitor. That's uh, Ryland Annabelle, two race wins last night. Solid third place in, in one of the earlier heats tonight. Comes on through once more. Should be a couple of laps still to run in this one here. This race brought to you by Clements and Stevens. Through comes Zarali Tohura. Pull some on, tucked in behind her, trying to unsettle the tank. On the main straight now, the race leader. White flag comes out. Pull some on, takes care of car number 37. Zarali Tohura spins her, brings her to a halt. Race leader though, going through the Lammermoor Distillery Corner onto the main straight to uh, collect another race win, car five. Drazen Ryland Annabelle takes this one here out. Still one more race to go tonight, four stock cars. Should be an absolute belter. So Nico Tohura, car number 75. Comes home in second place ahead of Shannon Simon, car number 26 in third. Paul Simon, 77 in fourth. Zach McClinigan, car 52 in fifth. Zara Lee Tahuda in sixth. Zane Tahuda in seventh. Samana Simon in eighth. Billy Greer in ninth. And of course, Mike Holly had that little incident out on the wall. He come home in 10th place. That race brought to you by Clements and Stevens. We'll take a quick pause, folks. We'll be back in just a moment with heat number five. Gillies Contracting, Battle of the Street Stocks. Alrighty folks, welcome back to Custom Signs, Beachland Speedway, front row of the grid for this one here, the Gillies Contracting Battle of the Street Stocks, Ashton will start, car number 61 from the front row of the grid alongside John O'Garthley, of course those guys coming to this round are leading, uh, Jacob Campbell, car number 94 will start from third on the grid, Kennedy alongside him in fourth. Next row back, we see Matt Stewart and his partner, John O'Bower. Car number four, start from fifth and sixth. Seventh will be Josh Murdoch alongside Mike Jones, starting from eighth. Of course, Jake Barr kept 732. He will start from ninth. Regan Constable out of this one here. Paul Leslie, your New Zealand champ, will start from 11th alongside Adam Stewart, your 634. Car number 10, Dylan McCaddy will start from 13th alongside Ben Jenkins in car number 345. Kelly Campbell will start car number 12 alongside Corey Schumacher in 16th place. Mitch Lavender will start from 17th alongside Andrew car number 46. Then we go back to Bauer in 19th with Dryden in 20th. Car number 8, the Hulk, Craig Blackler. He starts from 21st alongside the 86 of Chris Kurgazoo. Gillies will start 417 alongside AJ Lapsley, his partner in 24th. 25th, we see Palmer in the 315 wagon alongside O'Connell uh, in car number 94. Then 317, which is Hughes, starting from 27th alongside Finch in 28th. Next row back, we see Braden Adams, car number 475, starting from 29th alongside Ben Turner in car number 15. That is your field of cars lining up, folks. Heat number five, Gillies Contracting, Battle of the Street Stocks. Feel a big march down there for uh, young Dave, but he's on the back of the truck, heading infield, which can only mean one thing, folks. Heat number five, Gillies Contracting, Battle of the Street Stocks, set to commence. Scott Ashton, John O'Garthley from the front row of the grid. Garthley just sneaking forward. He gets a bit of a nudge from behind. As we go racing down into turns, a one and two. Plenty of congestion there, mid-pack, the Hulk, they tried to unsettle him. Oh, there's a car up the wall on the back straight there. Looks like one of the, uh, the Riverside cars, that may be McCaddy backing uh, back. But uh, there's an absolute jam on the back straight, I would say. We will see the red light come on. There is absolutely no room whatsoever for these cars to get through there. Dryden's involved in car number 33. That was a massive shunt down the back straight.
Just trying to catch uh, who those cars were. Cannot see those numbers whatsoever. So the 315 of Palmer and 77, I believe, which of course is Schumacher. He was the winner of uh, heat number four just a little bit earlier on. But it was congestion right across the back straight. And the back of Palmer's car absolutely demolished. I mentioned him in the last race and how basically the roof was flapping about and hanging in there. He has been absolutely drilled. That car is demolished. It had a big rollover here at uh, the start of the season, but uh, the back wheel, the right rear, absolutely hanging off that car. There is no right rear guard, and we are going to check out the replay, hopefully, if the uh, pits media get it up on the screen here. I'll talk you folk through it. So a lot of congestion around a one and two. We're looking mid-pack at the moment. Palmer was down low. He's coming out of uh, turn number two. In fact, uh, it was further back than that. In fact, it was Adam Stewart involved in that initial contact. That um, So, yeah, it was. It was Adam Stewart that got into Schumacher. Palmer arrived after that. Lights out, lights out, lights out, lights out. So, set for a restart here. Gillies contracting. Battle of the Street Stocks underway once more. So Murdoch, he heads to the infield as well. He was uh, involved in some early contact. Kirkazoo goes through. He's alongside Adam Stewart. Pretty sure that's the race leaders in behind them. We've got uh, Ashton leading this one here. Campbell. Garthley trying to get up the inside. Ashton's gone around down there in three and four. So another one of the drivers in contention has been absolutely drilled and I would say there'll be some damage to the rear of the 61. He's going to loop it on the main straight. He's done well to spin it around and get back in action as we go red. So Ashton's car parked up in a perfect spot right down here in front of the control tower and uh, he's had a big bite out of his rear door. How they missed the rear wheel of the 61 machine is beyond me for uh, for all account i thought that he was going to be done and dusted as well but no so they come into turn number four it was jacob campbell that spun him bounced off garthley three one seven d move backwards car number 15 three, that's going to head to the infield that's ben turner keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going Keep going. So Sean Hughes Keep going. coming to 3 he's going. grabbed himself a, uh, a little bit of real estate Four, in that one there, he's been marched backwards. Uh, the, buggy move backwards. the 1NZ of uh, Leslie parked up on the infield there as well, so he's out of the front. And the front end of Garthley's car, car number 35, the left front absolutely stuffed under the front of his car. So he's the man that was leading, heading in to today's racing, both him and Scott Ashton in car number 61. So as we've mentioned all day, folks, this is where the action gets real. This is where basically you get that target on your back and anyone who's not in contention will go after you. They really will. So set for a restart. And as we go green, Jones leading this one here, of course, will uh, reset the timing with a number of those cars dropping off. Matt Stewart tucks in behind Jacob Campbell, the man they call the Muppet. Behind them we see Andrews, car number 46. Gillies trying to find a way through as well. Gillies gets spun. He gets taken to by Ben Jenkins in the 345. So Jenkins working his way through the field here now. The Hulk, he's tucked right in behind. Finch, that is. Car number 26. Murdoch out there just trying to score some points at the moment. He's running around the outside of this uh, circuit here. Just trying to bag as many points as he can. They are going to be vital as they head into uh, race six a little bit later on. Kyrgyz who got absolutely drilled there as well. So Jones leads this one here. 2NZ is your race leader. Matt Stewart, the 828 now up to second place. So Matt Stewart showing some good form. In 
fact, Stewart may well be ahead of the two NZ. There's all sorts of action happening out there at the moment. It's hard to get a gauge on who's actually leading this one here. The 2NZ showing on the timing monitor. He's the man that just come through. He leads. Red. We've red. gone red. 61D to the infield. 61D to the infield. You have a flat outside tyre. So 61D, 61D to Scott Ashton. So Scott Ashton gone to the infield, so that's both he and Garthley out of this one here. So it was Jacob Campbell that put the big hit on Garthley earlier on. He took a swipe at Ashton a little bit earlier, and then he got his teammate Garthley. So uh, Campbell certainly putting on the big hits. So your 2 in it, Mike Jones, your current race leader. Matt Stewart in second, then we go back to Andrew Carter number 46, Campbell's up in fourth place, so not only is he inflicting some pain, he's driving well, McKinney up to fifth, then we go back to Ben Jenkins, Kelly Campbell in seventh place. Seven laps to run, heat number five, the Gillies contracting, battle of the street stops here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway, Ben Jenkins tucks in behind Gillies, comes down low, leaves him alone. Through he comes, he'll have his sights set on Dylan McCaddy in car number 10 as they set sail down the back straight. Campbell comes through. So's McCaddy, so's uh, Ben Jenkins. Looking for the race leader. He's on the main straight now. He's tucked in behind Sean Hughes. It's a 2NZ. Heads on to the back straight. Matt Stewart in second place. Mike Jones, he's had a uh, pretty rough weekend here. So he'll be relishing the opportunity to be running at the front of the field. Plenty of action happening around him. Sean Andrews in the 46, he's been competitive this weekend. Blackler trying to find a way down the inside of Campbell. Campbell turns his attention to Finch in car number 26. Three laps to run. Jones on the main straight now. It'll now be two laps to run. Kyrgyzou right in behind Hughes, trying to find a way through. We look for Matt Stewart. Stewart goes through. He's got his brother Adam Stewart on his outside. White flag should come out this time around, it does. Mike Jones with one more lap to run here. Heat number five, battle of the street stocks. Through comes Stewart. Braden Adams, he's absolutely all over the back of Steve Dryden. Gives him a little bit of a helping hand down there in one and two. Just unsettles, oh, there's a rollover down there. In uh, turn number four, that might be Curtis, or is it? Just trying to catch a number, it is Chris Kyrgyzou upside down. Bow, move backwards, Just bow, move as the 2 NZ the comes across. Backwards, so Bauer, he backs up. Keep going, Brett, give them a bit of space. Keep going backwards, we'll get you back in your position. Second car looks like Jordan O'Connell ins. It is. It's a lot of damage to Inns' car. Kyrgyzou salutes the crowd. Put your hands together, folks. Having a chat to the uh, the medic, you'll be all good, the young fella. So just watching the uh, replay courtesy of Pitts Media. Kurgazoo was on the outside, he got absolutely drilled. He was on the outside of Mike Jones, who only had one corner to go, and ins come from a long way back and absolutely fed it to him. Had nothing to do with Bauer whatsoever. He got the best seat in the house watching Kurgazoo go over. Just looking at another angle of the replay here, Kurgazoo was coming in hot. He was in behind Bauer. And Inns, absolutely, he was racing in there. There was no way in how that he wasn't hitting his target. And over goes Kyrgyzou. Kyrgyzou was looking racy. Absolutely drilled him. 
fact, in all fairness, the uh, the impact that Kyrgyzou got on the back wheel there, it actually um, it, it stayed pretty good. I mean, I had, looking on it at the moment, doesn't look too good. It's on its lid, but uh, I would say there's not as much damage to that car as what we possibly think. But he was absolutely smashed. Jordan O'Connell wins from Eastern State Speedway. Put in a big hit, a lot of damage to the front of his car. So lights are out, set for a restart. So it looks like Campbell now may well be up into second place. Car number 94, Matt Stewart behind him. In fact, the chicken flag has been waved, so they will be the official result. The 2NZ. Taking this race out. Inns parked up down there at turn number four, so he only made uh, about 15 metres after that big rollover. Didn't quite make it to the chicken flag. Race over. So a very, race very over. entertaining race. race we'll we'll wait for those results to come through. Two. So uh, Matt Stewart, the 828, did get home in second place, just behind Mike Jones. Dylan McCaddy, car number 10 by the looks of it, uh, awarded third place ahead of Ben Jenkins, car number uh, 345, Craig Blackler in fifth, few, Sean Andrew uh, in uh, sixth uh, place, Kelly Campbell in seventh, go, Jacob Campbell in eighth, Chris Kogazoo who uh, was upside down, ninth place, Jordan O'Connell in in tenth, Sean Hughes in eleventh, Jake Barr twelfth, Adam Stewart thirteenth, Clint Gillies in the 417 in fourteenth place, Brent Bauer car 99 fifteenth, Clinton Finch car number uh, 26 in 16th, Braden Adams 17th, AJ Lapsley 18th, uh, Mitch Lavender 19th, Steve Dryden in 20th place. So folks, there we go. There's going to be a lot of work going on down in that pit area. Hopefully Jason will have his running shoes on and uh, he'll be heading down to the uh, the infield there, uh, the outfield, sorry, and uh, checking out exactly what is going on in the street stock camp. It's going to be very, very interesting indeed. But coming up in just a moment, folks, we're going to see the second heat of the night for modified sprints. Brought to you by Caltech City North. Hope you're enjoying your night here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Amazing. I've got Chris Cougars here, mate. Not probably the best thing to do, go and shove a microphone in your mouth straight up. You've been snotted uh, in uh, turn three and four. What was that about? Um, I don't know. Well, yesterday that guy hit me after the race, and now he's um, hit me on the last corner of the race. So I don't know what it was about, but 
Yeah, he's certainly made an enemy anyway. Uh, so uh, I suppose he'll be making and doing everything he can to get that car back out there because a uh, bit of unfinished business for him now. Yeah, a wee bit. Um, it was a pretty slow rollover, to be fair, and the roll cage is all good. So just check the damages, change the wheel, maybe watch linkage bar and... Yeah, go up for the last one and see what we can do. <laughs> Hopefully he gets back out in that last one because he obviously failed to uh, to finish the race as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll see see if he's man enough, I suppose, if he wants to come out and play, but yeah, it's cool. He's still being towed off the track, I've just been told, so uh, it might not get your revenge just yet. It'll be just one of those ones that'll get uh, put onto the dashboard and perhaps uh, what goes around comes around, eh? Yeah, i got a good memory, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit stupid really, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was last corner, last lap. I come in and 99 and 2 NZ were on the picks and I braked and he just drove straight into the back wheel and yeah, done some cool shit. So <laughs> You'll do some cool shit back? Yeah, oh, I'll give it a go. Yeah. Oh, Darren and I can't wait to, to see the revenge, mate. It's going to be absolutely awesome to watch, I'd imagine. Oh, I'll give it my best. <laughs> just for you, Daryl. Just, just for you, Daryl. You hear Love that, you, mate? Chris. Love your work, mate. Just Love your work. for you. We will catch up with the two NZ. We've got a wee bit of time, Daryl. What's the story there? Yeah, all good, mate. Right, still we'll just go back and have a walk through here. And uh, we'll try and find uh, Mike Jones. I don't know where he's parked. Where is he? Try and catch up with him. Lots of work going on down at pits. I mean, that was a pretty brutal race, wasn't it, Daryl? Amazing. Absolutely. And, of course, um, what happened in that one there was a lot of the big guns that were right up there on points absolutely smashed. So, uh, as I say, hopefully they'll have the apicuses out and they'll be working out who's placed where and we'll get a bit of a uh, bit of feedback back to us as to who is uh, leading in the points going forward so uh, looking forward to seeing what that is well we're just caught up with the two and z we're still sitting in the car so we might see if we can try and get and have a bit of a chat with him uh while he's sitting in the car you're right. sorry mikey um he just thought uh jesus mate you wouldn't want to be in behind all the action that was happening behind you would you no there, there was cars everywhere <laughs> jesus mate would you just put the hammer down and just hope like hell did you yeah i did yeah 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 and yeah it paid off for once uh, of course, you got the your attention last night, and I did say everybody should swing their attention to the 1NZ man. It seems to be what's been happening tonight. Yeah, thanks for that, eh? Yeah, I think, it, I think, it, I think that has happened, yeah. Well, us commentators have got a, you know, a bit of influence on what happens around the, around this place, you know. So, hey, that's pretty awesome, mate. You'll be happy with that car. Does it need anything done to it? You happy with it? No, nah, it's going good. Um, no, nah, we'll just uh, check the tyres and uh, go again. Yeah, that's, it's always good when you can do that. Like I said, I think the rest of the carnage is happening behind you. They're still taking cars off the track. Yeah, were, I don't think there's many of us left. <laughs> it's going to be an awesome last race. If that 94 gets fixed up and Kugazoo gets gone, I think you should sort of stick behind and watch the show that's going to unfold. Oh, totally. It's going to be, uh, it'll be unreal. All right. Well, hey, good sponsors on the car, mate. Who looks after you? Um, Fenua Construction. Good um, stuff. Yeah, he's awesome. All right, mate. Hey, congratulations on the race win and just bring it home nice and tidy in the last one, eh? Yeah, will do. I don't think it's going to happen, though, eh? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. All right, up to you, Daryl, mate. Yeah, cheers, Jase. Uh, <laughs> their street stop boys be working flat out. There's still a couple of cars parked up down on the infield, and they'll be wanting to get those cars um, into the pits to get some work done on them. Steve Dryden's car and uh, looks like Corey Schumacher's car still parked up down there, so it uh, will be a delayed start, I would imagine. I think we're just going to cross on down to Jason. I think he's down in the pit area. Help, help sort of turn my mic on. Um, I tell everybody else to do it, but I tell you what, there's some work going on down here, mate. There's everybody's just come out of the woodwork. There's people come from out in the crowd to try and get everything fixed up, ready for that last race. It's going to be very interesting, Darrow. I think it's the street stock race we've been waiting for all season. What do you reckon? Oh, it's been absolutely brewing. It really has. Like last night, we've mentioned it last night. First couple of heats, yeah, a little bit of tap, a little bit of spin. Third heat, um, just warmed up a little bit. But tonight, of course, there's been all sorts of action, and um, oh, it's going to be an absolute wreck fest. Uh, to be honest with you, mate, it's not a given who's going to win this. I mean, no, no, the way no, these guys, the mood they're in, uh, we're, we're, the way we're, things we're. are happening down here in the pits, mate, the guys that are leading it being up upside down. You just don't know. This is the mood everybody's in tonight. And it's entertaining. That's what it's all about. That's what all these folks in attendance come in to see is uh, the, the, the demolition of vehicles. That's what we're here for as we go racing, folks. Modified sprints underway here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. We're a sadistic bunch, aren't we, when we sit back and uh, all we want to see is car crashes. So Jaden Fraser moves himself up into second place. He's going to try and chase down Glenn Johnson. This happened in heat number two last night. Johnson got off to a flyer. Jaden Fraser couldn't quite catch him down in third place at the moment. Shane McKenzie picked up a win a little bit earlier on tonight. 
He'll be brimming with confidence in this one here. He'll know now that he can go toe to toe with Jaden Fraser. No mean fit. Good battle at the moment. Further down the pack, Mason Whelan trying to make a move on his Riverside club mate. Vernon Helms, Michael Gimlet in behind them. So a couple of good battles on track at the moment. Johnson, the Dynaworks sponsored car. Comes through, turns one and two, stretches the legs down the back straight. Jaden Fraser, he's in hot pursuit. You can see that little bit of a rut down there between three and four. These cars parking themselves just on the outside of it. Car length and a half. Jaden Fraser, Johnson, Fraser attacking. He thought about it, he went wide, then he tried to go back down the narrow side and he's hit one of those ruts that we just spoke about. Comes back out on track in front of McKenzie. McKenzie now down on the pole line. Manages to get himself back out. Vernon Helm still holding that fourth place. Then Mason Wheel on the Monarch Motel sponsor car number 88. Then the 17 of Michael Gimlet. So Fraser. He'll want to watch himself down on that inside line. Sets himself up just on the outside of it. Looks racy. Johnson still holding on. The white flag is out. One more lap to run here. Heat number two of the evening for Modified Sprints. Fraser had a wee look on the inside. Couldn't quite make it stick. Down to the uh, Lammermoor Distillery corner. But a smoke coming out of car 23. But he's done enough to get home to bag his second win of the weekend. Jaden Fraser settles for second place. Ahead of Sam Mc, uh, Shane McKenzie. Car number 16. Then Vernon Helms. Mason Whelan. And Michael Gimlet. So that race order once more, first place, Glenn Johnson, he takes this one here out, Jaden Fraser in second place, Shane McKenzie in third, car 16, Vernon Helms in fourth in car 6, Mason Whelan, car number 88 in fifth, and Michael Gimlet, car 17 in sixth place. Jaden Fraser with the fastest lap of the race, a 14.792. One of the other reasons I wanted to catch up with you as well is because, man, you've been so quiet this weekend and this is unlike you. What's going on? Are you brewing up for a big bash course, Sean Andrew? Oh, it's a bit different for a change, really, to be honest. We're usually right in the most of it, but I'm getting a bit older, I guess. Not really. I'm just getting lazy, to be honest. <laughs> Can't be bothered fixing the car after you damage it. Yeah, well, we had Dwayne at home as well, getting his cars all good and go, and just helping all the other guys from like Cobras and that got a bit of damage the other week, and giving them a go, and sort of want a bit of a break. And we got a new one on the making as well. It's already oh, up. really? So, but I'm disappointed because when I you know, was talking about you last night when we introduced the stream, we said watch the 46 C car. Are you going to disappoint me, or are you going to pull finger and really wreck some shit for the next one? <laughs> oh, that just depends to see who has a go, really. <laughs> it's been a long time trying to just get to this point. Every yeah, absolutely. Year like here. Yeah. I know, I see a lot of the Christchurch boys coming over here, obviously knuckles up and all that sort of stuff, just trying to get through. But, hey, if this is the last time you're going to race this car, is it? Oh, shit, no. <laughs> oh, well, we need to wreck it. We need, you've got a whole off-season to rebuild it, mate. No, because I've got to focus on building the new one as well. More cars and merrier. One for every meeting, I think. Don't tell the missus, actually. <laughs> She'll kill you. She's watching this too, oh. by the way. Yeah, she is too. I uh, love you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, mate. So what is the plan for the last heat? Is it just to try and keep it tidy or try and help some of your, your teammates through? Yeah, well, we'll try and keep it tidy. Like, we started second on points going into last night. So we've me and Mitch, Mitch has just been an animal keeping clean as well and doing the job and I think we should be up there maybe. Like, oh, I think you are actually, Daryl might be able to tell us a bit more but I, I, one of the things is that's it, you've actually gone through unnoticed which is something that we're not used to uh, to seeing and same with Mitch Lavender, nobody's really mentioned him, even, even Daryl uh, commentating hasn't mentioned him too much so it's almost like you're on stealth mode mate. It is quite good eh, it has definitely been a change in that but oh, it's actually quite fun trying this racing thing instead of just wrecking thing for a change as well it's been quite good absolutely good sponsors mate who looks after you oh just everyone eh? like oh especially big fans to the missus of course like 
that was Cobra's colours on Saturday and yeah back white and blue and that and then yeah huge thanks to Suck It Up, Falcon Parts Ring Eura, Anderton Decorators, uh, Jack Sign, City South Fan Spears, Elite Wheel Co, um, Al down. Sorry. Down. OTA Cabin Rentals, Bandawi Tiny Homes, Bridgestone Kaipoi and CC the Finishes and Get definitely the kids. How is? <laughs> I'm surprised you've even got any room to put paint on your freaking car with all those uh, advertisers. But hey, man, best of luck, and hopefully you bring it home. Uh, it'll be good to actually see you get a chicken flag. You probably deserved it all the years you've gone and helped people and protected people, eh? Yeah, it's good to like you know. Hopefully, all those years of helping everyone else get up there, and favors get called in a bit. So. It's all about just having fun though, looking forward to a cold one after with, with, with everyone. And a big feat by Arnie by the sounds of things. Oh yeah, they do the, be, the best bit for us, eh? Arnie and his team are legends. If there's anybody watching here that's a competitor, they're all throwing stones at you now. <laughs> if, there, if there's anybody here that's a competitor, would you recommend them coming down uh, with the hospitality you get from Beachland Speedway to come and have a, have a race around the track? Oh definitely, Beachland's is mint. Like, Dunedin Christchurch street style racing is just the best in the country, I think. Oh, Nelson's great as well. Uh, like you know it's just that bond that you sort of have like you're wrecking each other and you just, everybody's helping everyone fix it the cold ones afterwards and that like Matt, and yeah, Matt and his team here oh, man, he's been busy all day so he jumped in helped out got his car all sorted and gave him a bit of a break so he could focus on this wicked meeting Absolutely. We'd better get handed over to Daryl because I think the Super Saloons have started. We'll hand it up to you, Daryl. Excellent. Cheers, mate. Uh, and uh, we are underway here. One lap done and dusted, and it's Jason Gold who leads them around here. Heat number three of Saloons, their final race of the night. Shane Greer in second place. And we go back to Aaron Andrews. Then Bennett. Mark Dobson having a wee look down the inside of Bennett here. He was your race two winner. Jason Gold looking the goods here at the moment, though. Travis Smith, he's right there as well. See the 891 of uh, Osborne on track, that's Super Saloon, so uh, he's cruising around here getting that car sorted out in this one here. Not sure whether it's Mark or whether it's Ashton behind the wheel of, uh, of that car for this one here. But the saloon action happening up front, Jason Gold with a handy lead. Shane Greer, Aaron Andrews side by side, they head down to uh, Lammermoor Station Corner. Then we go back to Bennett, car number 66, Ryan Bennett. Mark Thompson behind him. Good to see uh, Phil Burgess back out on track, car number 15. Of course he had uh, missed heat number two, had all sorts of dramas in heat number one. So uh, hopefully Phil gets a decent run here in heat three. Not looking too bad at the moment. He's up ahead of Travis Smith. Then we go back to Wayne Bennett, then Osborne, and that Super Saloon at the tail of this field. Gold comes through. He's under all sorts of pressure now with four laps to run. He's got Aaron Andrews, the Otago Medals machine, right behind him. This should be a good battle up front. A couple of solid competitors. Jason Gold on the outside. The Hypermac Mustang of Aaron Andrews just measuring him on the way through. Looking for a way past. Nothing between them at the moment whatsoever. Shane Greer. He's a distant third place. Then we go to Bennett. Dobson. Then uh, Burgess. Smith. Wayne Bennett. And Osborne. Mark Dobson all over the back of Bennett. The 51 and the 66 battling it out. But that battle up front... Still could go anyway. Andrews had another look on the inside. The white flag comes out. Gold on the inside. Andrews attacking on the inside. Can he get a run down here? Gold defends, comes right over. Gold, though, he's made a little bit of a mistake through three and four, but he's going to hold on. A well-driven race for Jason Gold. Well done, young fella. The 57 of Aaron Andrews home in second place. Shane Greer, he'll collect third, but Jason Gold takes this one here out, point two of a second over Aaron Andrews in second place, and we go back to Shane Greer, Ryan Bennett in fourth, Mark Thompson in fifth place ahead of Phil Burgess, uh, good to see Phil get home in this one here, Travis Smith in seventh, Wayne Bennett in eighth, and uh, Mark Osborne, I believe, car number 891, he was next in the queue. So that's the, uh, the last time tonight we will see the saloons on track. They've certainly uh, been entertaining, put on some great racing. Coming up next, we will see classic street stocks.
We've got green here at Custom Signs, Beachland Speedway, Classic Street Stocks out on track. Their third race of the afternoon, and it's Ani Tahura. Set sail off down the back straight. In fact, he's gone right out towards the wall there, just overshot things a little bit, which has allowed the Hoon, Daryl Richards, to duck down the inside. Car number 75. So there's an issue there for Ani Tahura. Lockie McLean in second place. Then we see Cuff, car number 19. That's the production saloon in third place. Two race wins so far for him. Shane Anderton out there, car number 83 from Christchurch. Not too far off the pace either. But it's the former 1NZ street stock driver. Hoon Richards goes around a 1 and 2. Set sail down the back straight. Lockie McLean just leaves the door open there. Allows Cuff to sneak right up the inside. Of course, Anderton and McLean there. That bit of a yeah, coming together at the end of the second classic street stock race. Was this race here brought to you by R.W. Richards Contracting? As we mentioned before, these cars here, these are the cars that you would have seen through the uh, the 80s, 90s, even the early 2000s. Certainly served the grade well. It's great to see a number of these cars returning to the circuit. As we mentioned before, it's almost exhibition type racing. It's not the, the full on contact, which we've uh, seen tonight in the Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks. Very, very hard to get bits for these cars. The last thing these guys want to do is uh, be constantly rebuilding them. Anderson having a wee look down the inside of McLean there. That's the 187 and the 83. McLean out high and wide, stretches the legs down the back straight. He's just got the nose in front. Hoon Richards comes through, then Cuff. Anderson on the inside, McLean on the outside. Anderson's going to get the job done here. He's got a better run on the inside. Right down on that pole line. It'll be a drag race down the uh, back straight. All the Mopar fans will be loving the look of this. So, of course, back in the day, we would have seen the likes of uh, your Steve Drydens, Russell Stewarts, those uh, sorts of names behind the wheels of these cars. Hoon Richards it is who'll take this one here out. Heat number three. Goes the way of Hoon Richards, car number 19, Gary Cuff home in second place in this battle for third. Still a door handle to door handle, but it's going to be Anderton who will get home in car number 83. That is classic street stocks done and dusted for the night here at Custom Science Beachland Speedway. That race brought to you by R.W. Richards Contracting. Looks like modified sprints back on the dummy grid. They uh, managed to come in, have a quick gulp of water, helmets back on, and they'll be out for their uh, third and final race of the evening next. Eight laps of action brought to you by Caltex City North. So a massive thanks to the sponsor of the Modified Sprints for the weekend, of course, uh, Caltex City North. Michael Gimlet on the front row of the grid. Group position one, Jaden Fraser on his outside. Then we go back to Mason Wheeling, car number 88, and Vernon House. It's an all Riverside second row. And then Glenn Johnson, your race to a winner. And uh, McKenzie on his outside. Shane McKenzie, he's picked himself up a race win tonight as well. But Jaden Fraser, he'd be pleased those couple of lads are uh, a couple of rows back because I've certainly uh, put him to the task here tonight in the modified sprint. It's been some great racing, small field, but still fantastic racing. So Jaden Fraser. Heads down the back straight, absolutely gapped them. 
early in this one here. Eight laps of action. Vernon Helms moved up into second place. He's got McKenzie behind him. McKenzie off to a good start in this one here. Then we go back to Johnson, Mason Whelan and Gimlet. So the battle for second, third and fourth at the moment. Shane McKenzie throwing everything he can at Vernon Helms. Helms would dearly love to finish his night off on a high, a second place. And a pretty classy field would be a good note to finish on. Fraser, almost a straight length away from the opposition. He is absolutely scorching in heat three. Oh, Johnson with a big look out the inside of McKenzie. Thought there was almost contact there, but they come through. McKenzie's got a nice run. Can he make a way around Vernon Helms? Car six. Johnson's gone high and wide. He scrubbed off a lot of speed. Here comes McKenzie on the inside of Helms. Helms shuts the door. This is a great race for second and third place. Nothing between these cars at the moment. Helms down low. He's making McKenzie have to work for it. We got the uh, the switch back. He's having a look on the inside. McKenzie, can he make it stick this time around? They're side by side, round three and four. Onto the main straight once more. F uh, two to go here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Jaden Fraser. He's on a uh, pretty cruisy Saturday night cruise here. He's a mile out in front of this one. McKenzie. Made a bit of a mistake there. Him and Helms almost had it coming together, so he's released Helms away from that battle. Checkered flag comes out. Jaden Fraser. He's your race winner. Vernon Helms, his Riverside club mate, will come home in second place. A nice drive. Then McKenzie, they put on a heck of a battle between the uh, two of them. So Jaden Fraser takes it out 9.6 seconds. That is come massive, folks. Vernon Helms in second place. Shane McKenzie home in third. Glenn Johnson in fourth. Mason Whelan in fifth. And Michael Gimlet comes home in sixth place. You wouldn't believe what comes through my ears, folks. You would not believe it. Nico Tahuri on the front row of the grid. Holly on his outside, set to go. Race number three, brought to you by Clements and Stevens. And Nico Tahuri, he'll lead them down to turn number one and two here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Ryland Annabelle holding that second spot. Oh, that's a big hit in the wall down there. That's Shannon Simon, I think it is in the 26 car, has gone into the wall hard down there between a one and two. He's parked up, that may bring out the red. He'll be trying to fire that car up, the red has come on. Red, red. So didn't quite see who it was that uh, went into the wall down there with Shannon Simon, but it was certainly a nudge. We'll have a look on the uh, Pitts Media replay. Nico Tahuta led them down there. Now it was actually Adam Neighbor that took him right out to the wall in a solid hit just on that uh, right front corner. But he's done well. Some uh, some good competitors actually coming out of U Saloon straight into stock cars. As we go green once more, Nico Tahota leads here. Down into turn number three and four. Trazen, Ryland, and about right there. Paul Simon in the 77 car. There also. Through comes Savannah Simon, car number seven. And that's Mike Holly has his second visit up the wall in two races. 
Just step back from there, folks, until such time as an official tells you you can get up nice and close just until it's uh, safe. Thanks to that person just for fighting off those number of kids. Set for a second restart. Zach McClinigan goes to work on the back of Adam Neighbour in the 99 car. They're on the main straight now. Neighbour, he gets spun around. McClinigan goes to the inside as the race leader comes through. Nico Tahuta still being hassled by Ryland Annabelle. Pulls him on, not too far away from the race leaders. He's in third place at the moment. They're on the main straight now. They come out of turn number four. Zane Tahuta, he's on the inside. I'm reckon he might be waiting for Paul Simon. Simon's going to duck in behind Zane Tahuta. There's all sorts of trouble down there at the moment. McLennigan, he's in a tangle there with uh, Ryland Annabelle. All the cars get up and running once more. Zane Tahuta, he sends Paul Simon down to the infield. Tries to keep him there. As we heard before, folks, season points very, very close between these drivers. Pulls them on, playing a bit of hide and seek down there on the infield. He goes right to the infield and comes back out. Zane Tahuta follows him. So Tahuta lost sight of where he was. He was trying to ghost him, but pulls him on. He outsmarted him and managed to get back out on track. So Nico Tahuta leads. Through comes Paul Simon. He's got uh, Zara Lee Tehuda up in front of him. A lot of smoke coming out of the 88 car. That's Zane Tehuda. Savannah Simon through. Then Ryland Annabelle. Couple of laps to run in this one here. The final race of stock cars for the season here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Savannah Simon holding second place at the moment. Car 7 kept her nose clean in this one here. Ryan Annabelle chasing though. Zara Lee Tahuta, she's side by side as a white flag comes out with Paul Simon. Nico Tahuta comes through. Looking for the race leader, Nico Tahota, car number 75. He takes this one here out. Pretty entertaining race there for stock cars. Mike Holly coming off second best, plenty of book, plenty of ash. That's what we like to see in our stock cars here. At Custom Signs, Beachland Speedway. Nico Tahura takes this one here out. Ryan and Annabelle in second place. Savannah Simon awarded third place here. Paul Simon in fourth. Zara Lee Tahura in fifth. Zach McClinigan in sixth. Adam Neighbour in seventh place. Uh, Zane Tahura in eighth. Mike Holly, of course, uh, was parked up on the wall there. He was ninth. And Shannon Simon, who hit the wall hard in uh, turn one, lap one, in tenth place. So uh, Dave Perry, the clerk of the course, he will walk out. He will try and hunt down Nico Tahura and uh, give him the chequered flag. That race brought to you by Clements and Stevens Plumbers. Uh, panel beaters, sorry, Plumbers. Where did I get that from? Coming up next, folks, Youth Saloons set to roll out on track here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Drops here. This race brought to you by uh, 
Mumford Holdings and Kiddo leads it down. Of course, some news from the Usaloon uh, field, folks, is young Max Kemp that had that fire in the last race. He is actually behind the wheel of car number 53, the Wallacetown Motors machine. So uh, very, very cool of Josh Richardson to jump out and say, there you go, mate, you go out and have a skid here in the third race. So uh, that's the sort of sportsmanship we like here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. So Kiddo leads this one here, Cron in his last junior race, chasing hard. He'll do well when he gets up to the street stock grade. He may be here next year in the Battle of the Street Stocks. That'll be cool. Caden Race in third place. And we go back to Brooke Fraser. Uh, Brooks Hoper. Then Bennett. Then we go back to Kemp in car number 53, the Wallacetown Motors car. Then Johnson. Kate Howard coming through, car number 99. She's about to go a lap down. Kiddo still going door handle to door handle with Cron. Goes to the outside of Kate Howard. Not much room between uh, Kiddo and Howard, but he did well because he actually pulled about a uh, car length lead over Cron at that stage. Cruz Soper comes through, the Speedway Garage, car number 88. Great looking car. Still Kiddo out in front on this one here. Six laps to run, they go to the outside of Bennett, stretch the legs down the back straight. Dresden Constable just up ahead of both Kiddo and Cron. Sits down on the pole line there, gives them plenty of room. Jaden Cron, the fastest man on track, a 21-3-4. Caden Race, he's looking quick in this one here as well. He's up to third place and looks to be actually catching those two cars up front. Uh, he's been impressive this weekend, young Caden Race out of uh, Riverside Speedway. He's right up there now with the leaders. Here comes Cron, making a move on the outside of Kiddo. So we have a new race leader, Jaden Cron. Kiddo in second place. Then we go back to Caden Race, car 49. Then we go back to Sopa. Bennett. Kemp. Matty Stewart. Maya Johnson, couple of drivers there, cutting their last laps in new saloons. Caden Race, just fallen back slightly from Kiddo, he was right on that back bumper. Just a lap or so ago, Kiddo driving well. Cron goes to the outside of those uh, couple of slower cars here. Drew Soper come to a standstill on the main straight. Tristan Constable slams the picks on. Soper gets away again, so a bit of a gear selection issue there, maybe for young Cruz. White flag is out though, folks. One more lap to run. The car to watch out for, car number 29, heading down to the Lammermoor station. Turns three and four, tucks himself in behind Cruz. Soper takes out. A race win, that's Cron, car number 29, takes this one here out. Kiddo, a well-driven race, comes home in second place. Car number 27 ahead of the 49 from Riverside Speedway. None other than Caden Race.
Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website www.techweld.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. Are you building a new commercial business or home? Or is it time that your existing premises had a repaint anywhere in the South Island? Then Anderton Decorators have you covered. From floor to ceiling, wall to roof, Anderton Decorators offer the latest techniques, equipment and technology to make even the hardest tasks seem simple. Anderton Decorators also has the expert team to take the frustration out of your next project. Call Shane today on 027 Painting. It's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. Alrighty folks, here we go, Gillies Contracting, Battle of the Street Stocks, it all comes down to this, heat number 6, Dylan McCaddy, car number 10 from Riverside, he will start from the front row of the grid alongside his partner Ben Jenkins in 3, 4, 5, Turner starts, car 15 from 3rd alongside Adams car number 4, 7, 5 starts from 4th. Next row back, we see the 1NZ of Paul Leslie start from 5th with Adam Stewart in the 634 on his outside. Finch will start uh, cars 26 from 7th alongside Sean Hughes in the 317 in 8th place. 9th, we see uh, O'Connell Inns in car number 94. He is out, I've just had confirmed. Might be a, a lucky thing. Uh, Palmer in the 315 starting from 10th. AJ Lapsley from 11th. And Gilly starting the 417 from 12th. Regan Constable is out. Jake Barr will start 7-3-2 from 14th. Chris Kurgazoo, good to see if Chris got back out there. Uh, he is in car number 86. He is out. Uh, he's out there. Blackler, car number 8. He is starting from position 16. The 2NZ of Jones, he was the uh, the Heat 5 winner. He will start from 17th alongside Murdoch in car number 83. Steve Dryden, he's out for the night as well. He wants to start from 19th, which will leave Bauer starting from 20th. John O'Bauer from Riverside Speedway, he will start from 21st. Matt Stewart from 22nd. Sean Andrew, car number 46, will start from 23rd alongside Mitch Lavender. They're right in the hunt, folks. 23, we see Kenneth from Christchurch start alongside Jacob Campbell, car number 94. From 27th on the grid, Schumacher and Kelly Campbell in car number 12 at 28th. And 29th, John O'Garthley starts car number 35 alongside Scott Ashton, car number 61. So uh, it's going to be a heck of a battle. Unfortunately, folks, I was hoping to get some updated points up here to the con box. have seen absolutely nothing, so I can't even give you an insight into uh, who might be placed where heading into this last race. But I tell you what, it's going to be one of those ones that I hope if you're uh, sitting on the edge of your seat... This is what it all boils down to, folks. We've had five heats of action over two nights in the Gillies contracting street stock battle of the uh, the street stocks here at uh, at um, Custom Signs Beachland Speedway, and it's all going to come down to this. Every race has got more aggressive as the uh, the two nights have gone on. That last race was absolutely spectacular. So clerk of the course heads on down to the infield. Lights out, lights out. Atmosphere here folks is absolutely electric. This is heat number six, the final heat of the uh, Gillies contracting Battle of the Street Stocks for 2022-23 here at Custom Signs, Beachland Speedway. So down to turn number one and two. Of course we are running reverse direction in this one here. And it's all fairly tidy here at the moment. Bit of action going on there. There's a car facing the wrong direction down there in turn and number three. Palmer getting some attention from Adam Stewart, not for the first time to uh, tonight either. So Palmer, he parks up down there in turn number, uh, turn number uh, two, reverse direction, one reverse direction. But uh, the red, of course, for... 94D, of course, uh, Campbell, the man that I was talking up before, will uh, make the trick down to the infield. Yeah, right so quick stoppage there, set to go racing once more. So Palmer still parked up down there in turn number one. So I'd imagine 
we will go red pretty smartly again for the 315, and we do. Red! Red! So that's for uh, Palmer and the 315. They did a, a great job. I never thought we'd see that car out again. That was the one that uh, Kyrgyzou absolutely drilled in uh, race number two. So just looking at the uh, replay at the moment, just trying to see what car it was that actually dealt to Campbell down there. So that was Jenkins out in front, McCaddy in second. The 1NZ trying to find a way through. Just looking for Campbell. Watch out, watch out. So we've gone racing once more here, folks. Battle of the Street Stocks brought to you by Gillies Contracting. Oh, that's a big hit down there. That is on, uh, is that on McCaddy? Looks like it is. Gets absolutely drilled down there in turn number four. Manages to spin around and get going once more. So uh, he'll come back. He started uh, on the front row of the grid, McCaddy. Jenkins out in front of this one here, the 3-4-5. He leads this one here while his teammate Dylan McCaddy gets taken to. Chris Kyrgyzou in second place. What a great turnaround for that team. He was on his lid in the last race. Got that car back together and Kyrgyzou currently running in second place. He'll be down on points though. He's being chased at the moment by car 15, which is Ben Turner. Oh, the 2NZ as it goes to the infield. So Mike Jones parks up as well. So he's out of this one. He had a win in the last heat, but he won't see the end of heat six. Kyrgyzou still in second place, chasing Jenkins. Then we go back to the 15 of Ben Turner. Sean Andrews right there as well. There's a car parked up trying to find its way back on track down there in turn number one and two he will manage to do so so there's been some uh, some tapping some spinning but it's all been relatively tame i thought we uh, oh there's a big hit down there in turn two that's bar he down to uh is that the one nz that he took to down there so campbell uh, jenkins leads kirgazoo second turner in third then andrew Adams, Lavender, Schumacher, Leslie, McCaddy, and Matt Stewart. That's your top 10 at the moment, folks. Seven to run here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. The Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks. Jenkins now starting to get amongst some uh, lap traffic. A lot of cars nose to tail. Max Stewart goes to the infield, the 828. He's out of this one here, the club president. So he's out of this one here. Jones is out of it. Palmer's out. So's Campbell. Schumacher looking for a way up the inside of Adams. Five to run. Lapsley comes through. Still feel like we're going to see something big unfold here, folks. Through goes Stewart, Kyrgyzou. Fairly fast pace here. Custom signs, Beachland Speedway as the laps start to count down. Kyrgyzou on the main straight. Turn up behind him and Jenkins. So may well be, we'll check on the timing monitor next time through. Kyrgyzou may well be leading this one here, which would be a remarkable turn of events. So Chris Kyrgyzou from Riverside Speedway leads this one here. There'll be a couple of laps to run as he comes on through. He's being chased by Turner and Jenkins. Andrew's right there as well. They must be in the mix. Be absolutely fitting if Kyrgyzou can put this one away. It'll be a massive thing. We've gone red. Red. 
61D to the infield, please. 61D to the infield. So 61D. Scott Ashton will go to the infield. So we're into the final laps of the Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks. After this one, folks, the final of the uh, uh, Otago Super Saloon Championship. We go green. Kurgazoo comes through. Turner behind him. Then Jenkins. Andrew. Schumacher. Leslie. They're all there. All the big guns. At the pointy end of the field, the man they're chasing, car number 86 from Riverside Speedway. Checkered flag going to come out for Chris Kurgazoo. He takes out the final race here at the Gillies Contracting Battle of the Street Stocks. In second place, we see Turner ahead of Jenkins. Number of cars just limping around at the moment. Just trying to bag some points. But I would imagine Kurgazoo will have a grin from ear to ear. That is payback for his team for working so hard to get that car back on track. Chris Kurgazoo takes out heat number six of the Gillies contracting Battle of the Street Stocks. Kurgazoo wins it ahead of Ben Turner. Ben Jenkins in third place. Schumacher got up to fourth. Paul Leslie in fifth. Mitch Lavender in sixth place. Dylan McCaddy did well from an early spin to get up to seventh. Sean Andrew in eighth. Braden Adams in ninth. And Craig Blackler, the Hulk, in tenth place. Brent Bauer come home in eleventh ahead of Kelly Campbell in twelfth place. Adam Stewart in thirteenth. Scott Ashton in fourteenth. Uh, Jake Barr fifteenth. Sean Hughes sixteenth. AJ Lapsley seventeenth. Matt Stewart in eighteenth. Dwayne Kennett in nineteenth. Mike Jones in twentieth place. Just down here in the pits, waiting to catch up with uh, Chris Kugazoo. Not a bad effort, really, considering that you know the last race he was upside down on his lid. It was a bit of an anti climax, that was probably you know, I was looking for the big hits and the and the big smoking, but it didn't happen. So, some pretty happy boys down here, um, con congratulating Chris after putting that car upside down on its lid. And I went over and spoke to the guys in the 94 car, who's the car that tipped him upside down. Uh, in the last race and uh, had a bit of a yarn to them and said what's the deal here and they said oh we started they got it all ready to go got it on the on all fours and uh, apparently had the death rattle so uh, so right we just got to get quickly get Chris uh, have a quick chat to him so we can get onto the super right, saloon we might just hold up a sec actually uh, oh no what, hey, Chris mate Bloody good, mate. You must be stoked with that. Upside down the last race and come out and won it. That's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, no, it's a pretty good feeling. Um, yeah, cars are still going good. I was going that fast, I was trying to find him, but I couldn't see him, so, yeah. He wasn't there to be seen, that's why. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All good. I'll come back to you, though, Chris. We'll head it up to Darrell. All righty, folks. Super Saloon's heat number three of the Otago Championship, and Greg Johnson off to a flyer. He's in a great battle down the back straight at the moment with Ricky Bond. So uh, Johnson in the Hypermac, Bolton in the Pro X. Bolton with the advantage at the moment. Racing Ray Stewart in third place. Then we go back to uh, car number 861 by the uh, 881, Matt Summerfield. In fact, it might be the Osborne machine, the 891. Very, very hard to see the numbers here uh, at the moment. 
Very rare path. He's mid-pack. He's got uh, Trevor Elliott right beside him. Then we go back. Ewan Shearing. Summerfield, Lister and Green. So Ricky Bolton comes through once more. Seven laps to run here. Custom Signs, Beachland Speedway, fastest man on track, a 16.649. The uh, Elliott scaffolding machine of Trevor Elliott. So Racing Ray Stewart starting to put some pressure on Johnson. That's for second and third here. Osborne not too far off the pace as well. We can see the sparks flying off the stealth machine as it goes round Lammermore corner. Down into the Paul McDonald earth moving corner. One and two. It's Ricky Bolton who leads this one here. Sits the car just out wide, comes across the main straight. It's a good battle up front here at the moment. Four cars, five cars involved in it. Elliott starting to get onto the back of Osborne. Ray Stewart just sits the uh, the front corner down on the pole line. He's trying to find a way down the inside of Johnson. A DNF and heat number two for Johnson. But he's come back strong in race three. He's trying to chase down Ricky Bolton. He needs to watch those cars behind him because Ray Stewart's right there ready to pounce. He's putting the nose up the inside between three and four. Very, very rutty down low, but they're side by side on the main straight. The two Central Motor Speedway club mates going toe to toe here. Look at Osborne, he's got the nose in there as well. Lap and a half to run here. The Otago Super Saloon Championship is what is on the line here tonight at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Bolton comes through, then Johnson. Look at Osborne, he's trying to pounce, he's trying to find a way through, but he can't quite get the job done. Ray Stewart, the man's in his 70s, but he drives like a 20 year old. He's fit and he loves a battle. Elliot, he's right there as well, he's in fifth place. More sparks from the back of Osborne. The white flag comes out. One more to run for Ricky Bolton. Oh, contact on the main straight between Stewart and Osborne. Tore the side of Ray Stewart's car. Basically off. So Stewart won't be a happy man. But it's going to be a race win. Ricky Bolton, the 864, he will take out. The final race for Super Saloons. Johnson gets home in third place. Trevor Elliott, a nice drive. In fact, uh, Johnson second place, Elliott in third place, then Osborne. Ricky Bolton takes this one out. Johnson in second, Elliott in third, Osborne in fourth. Barry Redpath in fifth place, Ray Stewart sixth. Alistair Lister in seventh, Ewan Shearing in eighth, Matt Summerfield in ninth, and Matt Green rounds up your top ten. We're just going to head down to the back of the pits there, folks. Jason's down there catching up with some of the drivers from the street stops. Well, I thought I'd better finish my interview with Chris Cougars here because, like, you know, he's got some bragging rights to be able to, you know, like I said, flip the car upside down. Car was on rails in that last race, and uh, but there's nothing to hit for you because you were looking for a man that wasn't there. Yeah, no, I just keep going around and he wasn't there, so just keep racing and uh, won it. It was a pretty good feeling to, to roll and then uh, come out and win it. It's, I think it's my first race win ever in Dunedin, I think. It's got to be a good thing, doesn't it? So, so what now? Do you just sort of take the car home and start? You've got a meeting next weekend. Are you racing next weekend? Yep, we've got a meeting at uh, Riverside on the 22nd, uh, last meeting. So, it should be good to go. I'd say the car's still going good, so it should be right to run our last meeting. Um, yeah, should be good. A good off-season rebuild as well. Obviously, it's got a wee couple of wee patches that need tidied up a wee bit. But other than that, it's uh, come off pretty good uh, tonight, considering uh, what happened to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this was actually my last season. I plan to take a few years off. My boy starts racing new saloons next year. So, um, yeah, I will do one more meeting down home and probably get parked up in a paddock somewhere for however, however many times I think and might come back one day. Well, there you go. It would be interesting to see if you actually stick to that, though. You and Dylan are pretty tight, uh, and I'm sure he'll probably try and talk you into staying uh, racing. Yeah, oh, no doubt. But you got you got to try. you got to try give up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Really you're not. You're not. No, I don't think you will. Oh, that'd be my bet. I'm not sure what Daryl. What do you reckon, Daryl? You think he's going to retire? Or I think he's full of shit. Oh, I'd probably go out the second option there, mate. He won't be able to bloody help himself. Daryl's we know that. Full of it. Absolutely full of it. All right. Okay. Righto. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll believe you if you actually really wreck somebody next weekend. Well, I'd love to win it, but I, I don't even see myself winning that either. So, um, yeah, who knows? Hopefully, if you turn up, maybe um, the old XF might turn up from Blenheim. But yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Absolutely, mate. Hey, well, well done. Good sponsors. We better give them a bit of a shout out. Yeah, for sure. We've got Calvin Lawson Forestry on the bonnet, uh, Southern Paints. We've got Dipton Engineering, Bob Christie's, South and Sandblasting, NTS Limited, and uh, Advanced Tyres in Invercargill helping us out. And uh, Kathy and Callum Crockett for uh, helping us out as well. It's been been great. Good stuff, mate. Hey, well, um, best of luck for next weekend, and then uh, best of luck on your. <laughs> your pending retirement. <laughs> just, just have a good laugh at that. I'm going to just walk away. Uh, but I, just before we go, I know the youth saloons have got a bit of a parade, um, so we'll hand it over to Daryl because Michaela's telling me off, Daryl. Fair enough too, Michaela. So uh, rolling out on track at the moment, folks. Bit of a, uh, a bit of a grand parade, bit of a, a lap of honour, you might call it. Get to your feet, uh, feet folks, and put your hands together. These are the, uh, the drivers that are uh, heading off into the, uh, the senior grades next year. So if you can uh, give them a warm round of applause here, folks, and thank them for the entertainment that they have given us over uh, a number of seasons here. They've been absolutely great uh, campaigners for the sport. And, of course, I mentioned before, Jaden Cron, car number 29, he is heading off to Street Stocks next season. Max Fleet, car number 16, he is going to race production saloons next season. Maya Johnson, car number 23, also going to production saloons next season. Brooke Soper, she's going to kick Terry out of the Super Saloon and she's going to go Super Saloon racing next year. Maddie Stewart, she's going to get amongst the uh, rough and tumble. She's in car number 828. She's going street stock racing. And uh, also Deacon Borthwick, another driver whose uh, car isn't here tonight. He's been a great um, competitor. He is uh, also going to street stock. So put your hands together, folks, for the uh, the youth drivers. Of course, they are the superstars of the future. A number of drivers that you have seen in the senior grades here tonight have come from this grade. So uh, very, very cool indeed. And um, these young drivers, this will be a moment that they will not forget. I can guarantee you that they will absolutely love sitting on the back of those cars, uh, getting a round of applause and getting to uh, wave to you good folk out there. So uh, very, very cool indeed. And uh, they do, they've done an amazing job. They've been great ambassadors, as I say, for the sport. So uh, well done. Um, some great young, uh, young humans here. We'll call them young humans, good young humans. So uh, they've done well over the... Uh, the past few years doing their lap of honour at the moment and very very cool that their uh, competitors come out and uh, do a lap here as well. So we're going to head on back down to the pits and we're going to catch up with Jason. Uh, pretty sure he's got someone down there. He wants to have a bit of a chat. Oh, absolutely. He's bloody. We'll be having a chat to Michaela after this, that's for sure. Um, so, of course, this man here, fantastic job, Otago Super Saloon champs, mate. You, uh, you've just been dialed in all night. You said there's a bit of, bit of sup, stuff up the top there for you. Yeah, it's um, it's been. I love this track. It's my favourite track. Um, should have done better at the New Zealands. Um, I had a bad final heat, but tonight tracks cars been really good. My crew have been on point, delivered me a good car, and that cush line up high. It's beautiful. You stand up. If you go a little bit too hard, you probably notice the car was trying to stand up. Um, I thought I was going to flip it over a couple of times there, but no, grass, grass track. Just throw it in and away it goes. The old um, uh, what is it? A Pro X uh, hooking up pretty good, is it? Yeah, Pro X too. Um, I love it. It's a gorgeous car and the more I spend in it the, the more I love it you know tracks like this it sort of suits it you know people are sort of what's happening with the grade and where are we heading and are we going down the late model path and all that sort of stuff and I don't know I, I like this old traditional you know send it off the end and stand on it and see what happens. Well I suppose it's you know there's been a bit of a mixed bag of lollies for it doesn't matter what sort of car you got uh, this season you know we've seen some four bars doing some great stuff we've seen some torsion bars doing some great stuff and we see the old boy from President Speedway New Zealand doing some good stuff as well so you know is this it for you for the season are you done and dusted? Yeah thank goodness it's been a long season for the Supers um, it's been good because a lot in the south more to come next year obviously because New Zealand's in Cromwell and the Extreme Series series is back down south so I'm look, really looking forward to next season yeah we're done we'll um 
we'll have a, a good beer tonight and relax tomorrow and then we'll start working out what we're doing for the winter, get ready for next year. Now what are, I've heard some rumours that some pretty good super stock drivers are actually jumping ship, Thomas Stanaway, I've even heard that Jason Long, we might see him out in the super saloon before long and even Wayne Hemi is talking about it as well. Yeah, it's um, because it's as an ex super stock driver myself, it's what do you go to, you know? Um, super stock driving, especially when you do the teams, it's the high end, it's the most pressure cooker, you know, um, racing you can get. And then I guess super saloons are probably the next one that gives it to them, other than sprint cars. But super saloon drivers, it's about the driver because they don't have a wing to hold them on the track. Um, and there's so many of us old buggers in super saloons now from the super stocks, um, it's, it's becoming a bit of a family, so we're really enjoying it. Well, the thing is that you guys aren't afraid of the wall either. You don't give it any respect, so uh, you know, you'll chuck it in there. You don't care if you end up on the wall because it's still going to be softer than what you're used to. Yeah, and it's only money that fixes it. <laughs> hey, $1. fifty, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's $1.50, as Campbell would say. Yeah, have you had a crack in um, Josh's car tonight? I think it's been a bit of a whore car tonight. Everybody's had a crack in it, haven't they? Yeah, I drove it in that second, uh, last saloon race off the back, had a go. Um, yeah, it was certainly different. It would, yeah, I'd have to be in the seat for you know half a season to get used to it. After driving a torsion car, they're totally different to drive. So, yeah, enjoyable. Um, I would alter a few things to suit myself, obviously, because he's a weird-shaped fella, but, um, yeah, apart from that, it's a good car. He breaks himself getting in the damn thing these days, doesn't he? He's a poor old bugger. We have to get him into a, one of his retirement, one of your retirement yeah. villages. Yeah, that's right, yeah. No worries. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, hey, thanks very much. Good sponsors, mate. You better think then. Uh, yeah, Gypsy Royal, BRT, and um, uh, Phantom Elder Care. So thanks, Jason. Thanks, the pits, and uh, thanks to Neen Speedway. Massive thanks to all of the uh, competitors, all the teams involved in the uh, Gillies contracting battle of the street stocks. You guys have worked so hard over the last couple of days to uh, turn around cars, get them on track. So a massive pat on the back and uh, a thank you for supporting this event. So in the starter's hands. Andrew and Palmer on the front row of the grid here for the final race. For 2022-23 season here, Custom Signs, Beach and Speedway. So Campbell's going to come out without uh, his car chained to the back of him. So he might just go out there and just cause a bit of trouble. He's done a wee bit of that tonight, Jacob Campbell. The back end of his car just flopping around in the breeze there. Right, so Campbell's just basically going to go out there and cause trouble, I would imagine, as we get underway. Palmer leads him down to turn another one or two. Some pretty vicious attacks on those cars at the moment. You can see them swinging all around the place by the chain. They must be absolutely awful to drive. So all cars still currently attached. Watch for Campbell. He'll come from behind and attack. We're going to have a car over down here in turn number <laughs> turn number three. It's like the warehouse car park on Christmas Eve. There's cars scattered everywhere at the moment. Got a rogue machine parked up down on the back straight. Adam Stewart comes through. Then Jake Barr, look at the back of Palmer's car, the 315, the whole back of his car, his proper race car pretty much falling off. The car that he's towing is probably in better condition than the car that he's actually driving. So he's actually got target marks all over the car, I've been told that he wants guys to hit those target marks so that he doesn't have to cut them off himself. So that's basically from uh, just behind the driver's seat forward. So Campbell gets absolutely down to by uh, AJ Lapsley, I think that was, as uh, the red comes on. Red. 
So folks, no idea who's winning. We're not really too worried who's winning. It's more a case of uh, pure carnage. So Ben Jenkins, he's lost his car. Just looking at the uh, the replay up here in the control tower, courtesy of uh, Pitts Media getting down into turn one and two. It's actually quite hilarious. There's cars just bouncing around the place and everybody attacking from all angles. The Lavender, the uh, car that he's towing, it got flicked over fairly early in the piece. Campbell went to work on Jake Barr's car. So Jake Barr's car, the tower that he's towing, absolutely demolished. It's been beaten from pillar to post. Lights out. Lights out. So lights out set for a restart in the street stock chain race. Ben Jenkins comes through. Palmer leads from Lapsley. Of course, Lapsley, uh, he doesn't have a car on behind where Palmer does. Mitch Lavender comes through, car triple five. Here comes Palmer. This is your race leader, the 315, coming past the commentary box at the moment. He's going to get some company from Campbell. Adam Stewart's going after Campbell. Jenkins here as well, so you've got three cars not towing anything that are going to attack the back of Palmer. <laughs> Palmer still just continuing on down the back straight, minding his own business. Adam Stewart's there. Adam Stewart paid Palmer plenty of attention over the two nights of uh, Battle of the Street Stocks. And here he is with his old mate out there once more. Campbell's into it as well. Adam Stewart's having a crack at the, uh, the bullseye on the side of Palmer's car. Oh, here comes Ben Jenkins. He's joined the party as Lavender. He has a crack around the outside. Palmer's still going. Look at the back of Palmer's car, the 315. It just does not exist. Adam Stewart straight into the uh, right rear of Ben Jenkins. Tell you what, it's a pretty good chain on the back of Palmer's car. Adam Stewart. He's like a uh, he's like a puppy with a dog a dog toy. That's what he's like. One of those chew toys. He just won't let it go. He's all over it at the moment. He's still stuck in there. That camel joins the party down there now as well. The Muppet car number 94. Mitch Lavender down the main straight. His Bulldogs teammate. Ben Jenkins behind him. He'll be lining up that car. Palmer, amazingly, still towing that car around, putting on some entertainment for his mates. Here comes Adam Stewart into the back of that car once more. Oh, and he's broken the chain. Adam Stewart has. <laughs> oh, he's been absolute uh, entertainment value. In this race here, Ed Stewart. As we go red. red. Mitch Lavender, he went down there and uh, finished off that car that Palmer was towing around. So Adam Stewart, as we said before, he would just not leave that car alone. And he finally got the job done. Mitch Lavender, he heads down to the infield, car triple five. So 
just trying to uh, do a little scan around the track and see who's actually left with a car on behind. Almost hard to decipher what's a street stock and what's a uh, a derby car that was chained behind. There's been a lot of damage here tonight, and of course uh, these guys will head into the off season with some big rebuilds. Race is over. Race is over. So, folks, that is it. Mitch Lavender has grabbed the uh, checkered flag down on the infield. There, he's going to uh, take the race win for the uh, the chain race. And <laughs> Stuart, smoke and all. Comes into the infield, that brings down the curtain, folks, on what has been an absolutely fantastic season of racing here at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Once again, a massive thank you to all involved for uh, putting this weekend together and putting together a fantastic season. Uh, that's it from me, folks. You guys stay safe over the off-season, and we'll catch you back here again uh, next season at Custom Signs Beachland Speedway. Enjoy your night, folks. Well, that's it, eh? So uh, for those people that streamed up tonight, thank you very much for joining us here at the Pits TV. We actually don't know who's actually won the Battle of the Street Stocks yet, the Gillies Contracting Battle of the Street Stocks. So that will be available very shortly through their Facebook page. So just make sure you go to the Custom Signs Beachland Speedway Facebook page and they will give you all the latest and greatest updates on what's uh, happening and who's won what uh, with all the uh, add-ons with the Young and the Restless and, uh, and obviously the Street Stocks. And it's been a fantastic weekend here at uh, Custom Sign Beachland Speedway. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for joining us tonight and we uh, look forward to catching you up again next week. Bye for now on behalf of the team of the Pitch TV.